Hello, how's everyone doing? Y'all doing good? Hope y'all doing good. Y'all doing good? Y'all doing good. Y'all doing good. I, I, I know y'all doing good. Ah, it's, it's a nice, it's actually um, crazily nice outside right now. It is like, uh, put it this way, I was outside with a t-shirt for a bit in the backyard, which for February in Canada is, um, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> I shall take it. I'm not going to complain. I'm going to take it. And we will, we will deal with that. Do a little arts and crafts. Because this came off the bridge bed like two seconds ago. Audio is low. Why is my audio low? It should not be low because I haven't actually played with any of the settings. Um, ever. So, if the audio is low, that may be on your end. But I haven't adjusted anything on my end. Let me bump it up a decibel. Um, audio okay. I haven't played with any settings. I never change the settings between streams. Um, so, audio is fine for you. Uh, mic is low. People are saying audio is low. I don't know why. Did mic properties high definition audio device? Yeah, it's the music is louder. Music is better. Okay, this is really annoying me because I haven't changed any settings. It's the exact same settings I use for everything, all the time. I haven't changed anything. <laughs> no, I've shot a video in here, but I have a completely different setup for videos. I use, um, I, I use um, the exact same settings I always use when I stream. I, I have a completely different setup for streaming than I do video, so that way I don't change the settings. Um, nope, same mic. I, I got, yep, same mic. I dropped the audio a bit. I dropped the music a bit. Maybe that was it. I'm using different music sources, so maybe that's it. I'm trying something new. I printed uh, a new tray, one of Steve's little hex trays here, and I had a spare magnet. So I'm going to try sticking a magnet to the bottom of the tray to see if, um, I don't know, it's, it's worth doing. There is knob on the mic got bumped. There's no knobs on the mic. It's, it's literally just a Rode wireless go plugged in through a 2.5 millimeter. Sound muffled. What, what's going on here? What's going on here? Okay, let me... Hello? Hello? Uh, the bass on this track. Well, here's the shitty thing. I keep getting copyright struck on my normal music. So let me, let me drop that down. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Uh, you guys want to build a CNC? Who wants to build a CNC? Put a one in chat if you want to build a CNC. And I, I got to cut it over here because I don't want to cut up my granite plate. Who here wants to build a CNC? You want to build a CNC? I want to build a CNC. We're going to build a CNC today. Uh, but right now it's called stalling because it usually takes about five, 10 minutes for everyone to show up in stream, um, you know, announcements and whatnot. So I, I do like to stall for a bit at the beginning of a stream just to let everyone have some time to show up and then we'll get right into the build. I've got most of the prep work done. Um, I forgot to drill out the holes in some of the parts. So we're going to have to do that during the build. Uh, but I've got all the rails are nice and greased up. I've got everything good to go. So we should be pretty good to go. Uh, Funk, I can see your comment. You can't hide it. You can't hide. Part one video is doing okay. I, I know. I, I see it. Uh, is that some type of hardware holder during the build? It's Steve's little screw tray. It's the, the hex tray that Steve modified to have, like, fillets or fillets. Um, so that way you can scoop the screws out better. But the plan is, if I put a magnet in it, when I put little things in it, like little nuts and whatnot, and I bump it, they shouldn't go flying. So, so if we... We put some nut. Eh, that might not work. Okay, never mind. That don't work. Ah, whatever. Uh, modified the hex tray to have magnets in them. Okay, maybe that one. Oh well, whatever. Um, okay, you guys ready to build a CNC? We are ready to build a CNC. But before we do that, a little bit of housekeeping to get out of the way. Hey, you. Yes, you. Wow, my. Okay, something is going on with my audio here. One second, let me. Properties. 
that's yeah high definition audio device okay filters is is the filter off something is something is going on with my audio because normally it it when i talk normally it sits a little bit higher did the compressor change at all yeah let me just bump it up let me just bump that up to to there yeah something did change with my audio and I, that's really weird not battery everything's cha everything's charged but i haven't changed any settings it's just if i look at the little obs bar graph like as i talk normally it peaks just before the yellow and it was peaking like a third of the way down so something changed but I didn't change it. Check Windows mic volume. Is that a thing? It, it's all maxed out. It, it, it's, it, it's spatial sounds are off. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't done anything. I, I literally did a stream yesterday with Brit and everything was fine there. Um, yeah, normally I run with a negative 5 dB, but I, I, I just dropped it to negative 1 dB, and it seems to be okay. Um, yeah, apron is noise canceling. Maybe. Maybe it is the apron. Who knows? It's a conspiracy. Okay, cool. Let's build a CNC. Who wants to build a CNC? But before we do that, hey, you. Yes, you. You want to win some filament from Polymaker? Every stream, we give away a spool of Polymaker filament. Link in the video description. Enter for your chance to win. Um, and you can get, like, a nice little cool spool of ABS that you can use to print the parts for this. Uh... Attach bike to beard. No. Seemed louder last night. Which is weird because I didn't change anything. And it's bugging me now. I didn't do anything. Literally, I, the computer stays on. It's not like I rebooted and like it booted up with different settings or whatever. This computer has been on for two weeks straight. <laughs> so, I'm, I don't know. I think it's fine now. If it's fine now, we're good. We're just going to keep going as is. Cool. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Stainless steel? Probably. I don't know. I don't care. Let's start building. Ba, 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 find the manual. Where's the manual? There's the manual. Cool. So what are we doing today? Today, we are building the Milo V1.5, the Millennium Machines Milo. Uh, made in a shed somewhere, probably. Uh, it is a desktop CNC mill. Now, I'm going to put a comment here to kind of stymie the I am very smart comments. It's, this is a desktop CNC. Yes, it's made out of aluminum and printed parts. If you expect this to work like a Haas, you're in the wrong place. So if you're going to leave a comment going, Ooh, it's, it, it, you can get a cast iron CNC to do... Don't bother. Don't bother. I've got enough of those comments already. I deleted half of them already. You're, you're saying something we all know. Nobody's expecting this to perform like a bridge port. We know that. That's not the point. Anyways. Um, but yes, we are building the Milo V1.5 desktop CNC mill uh, from Millennium Machines. And we're gonna be using the LDO Motors kit. Uh, so I've got the kit in various spots around me so I can grab it. I got the, the good stuff that we're probably gonna be using today right here. Uh, and we are gonna be building it fully stock. So as the kit came is as we built it, I've already had a ton of suggestions on things I should change. Not today. We are building it stock and then we'll get into shenanigans later. Um, what here? What's more dangerous, a 3D printer or a CNC mill? One of them has a, a, a piece of metal that gets hot. The other one has a part, uh, a piece of razor sharp carbide that spends at up to 24,000 RPM that will cut through anything, including you. So it's your toaster. Uh, some cool CNC product. Uh, can you call it some cool? So it looks cool, but I can't recommend it's used for. Okay. Um, do you like quadcopters? I've machined some quadcopter frames. Do you want to build a, a 3D printer that's absurdly huge and don't want to rely on printed parts so you can machine parts? It's a CNC. Do you want, if you want to make stuff out of Delrin, aluminum, very, very, very mild steels, wood, um, you, you need to machine those. Basically, if you could build it up to your final product, use 3D printing. If you need to subtract material to make your final product, you use machining. Simple as that. Um, in terms of other kits and, and designs like the MP CNC, the low rider, the, um, uh, what's the other one? The other CNC router. Those I have zero experience with. And if you ask me what, the, which one's better, I'm going to tell you neither because just like everything, everything has pros and cons. Look at your use case, your budget, your location, availability, and your end goals and make your own decision as to what you should get. Print, print NC. That's right. Print NC. 
Um, no, nothing is perfect. Nothing is the best. And if anyone tells you anything is the best in a category such as 3D printing or CNC machines, they're talking out of their rear end um, or they're trying to sell something. So nothing is the best. Everything has pros and cons. Look at your use case, your abilities, your, your goals, and make your decision as to what you get. In this case, I wanted something that wasn't crazy big. So straight out, that rules out pretty much all router-based machines. So router-based machines, we're talking like the print NC, the MPCNC, where your, your, your bed doesn't move, but your tool head does, which means your tool head has to be able to cover the whole thing, okay? Fortunately, those machines are big because you need to have, if you have a meter square, print volume or machining volume. Also, take a drink every time I call this a 3D printer or I call it a print volume, or I refer to something in a 3D printing term and not a machining term. Take a drink because we're all gonna be wasted by the end of stream if you do. Um, so yeah, so I don't like machines like that because I'm very limited in space. Yes, I know you can fold them up and you can do all kinds of cool stuff with them. Um, but this type of machine is called essentially a vertical mill. So what that means is your tool head, your, your spindle just moves up and down. That's it. The bed moves in the X and Y. So there are some advantages to a motion system like this. One, usually you have a much more rigid tool head because it only moves in one axis. So on a print NC, for example, the tool head moves up and down, left and right, and front and back, okay? Now, the advantage of that is the thing you're machining doesn't move. Um, but the disadvantage of that is now you have any slop in your X motion, any backlash in your Y motion, and any shenanigans in your Z motion all compound versus something like this where your spindle just moves up and down and everything else can be beefcake. Um, so there are advantages and pros and cons to both these motion systems is kind of like how a Core XY is not the best 3D motion system. It's just one of them. Same with bed flinging, same with cross gantry, same with the Ultimaker motion system. There is pros and cons to pretty much everything. Everything has advantages and disadvantages. Um, so that's what we're doing here. Um, there are a lot of 3D printed parts involved in this machine. However, the LDO kit that we're using does come with some of the optional upgrades. One of them is, um, you can see here on this picture, see these little brackets here? These are 3D printed in the original design. In the kit we're using, we use machined brackets. So it's it's gonna be a little bit more beefy. We got a, uh, an 80 millimeter, 1.5 kilowatt spindle. Um, comes with a bunch of extra stuff, comes with... It, the, the LDO kit comes with everything you need to make this machine go burr, but there's still more you can do and we'll get into that later. Uh, what color did I go with the parts? Um, everything is printed except for the motor mounts and the spindle mounts in Polymaker, uh, ABS, or ASA. And I used um, blue for the accent parts, and then everything else is black. Um, so I figure, hey, it's an LDO build. I'll do LDO blue. You know, it's not really LDO blue, but it's blue. Um, so we have that. So we have that. So we have that. Uh, and there we go. And before we get started here, uh, we have some acknowledgements. So whilst the work has been put in this project by the Millennium Design team is immense. We can, all can't take the credit for the project as a whole. We had a lot of help along the way. And we'd like to make, take a moment to recognize a few other entities outside of the team that helped make this a reality. Uh, the team at Open Builds, as many of you may know, we originally began this journey as a mod for the Open Builds mini mill. And whilst we moved far beyond the original capabilities of that machine, it would be remiss of us to not recognize the work that went into this project. Uh, to the Voron team, uh, Voron has been a huge inspiration for us and the team and the ethos of the community, driven development and the layout and content of our manuals. And we do owe them a lot. We even use some of uh, modified Voron parts. And finally, Fabrico, early on Fabrico had our back and support and donations so that we could afford to buy parts and helped us guarantee that we provide a machine that lived up to everyone's expectations. For that, we are eternally grateful. So shout out to those folks. Um, again, this is an LDO kit. Fabrico also does have part kits. They also do carry the LDO kit now, I believe. Um, but I believe the LDO kit is the first like all-in-one kit. Um, and that's what we're using today here. Um, and then introduction, take a deep breath for a second and realize something. Yes, you are about to commit to building a robot that can cut through metal, let alone your squishy human parts. This machine does not uh, what is it? Uh, DGAF. 
Okay, this machine, DGAF. It will do what, it te what you tell it to do, regardless of what's in the way. And also the spindle is several amps with mains voltage. If you don't know what you're doing, don't build one of these types of machines. <laughs> uh, it can electrocute you, it can cut you, it can set fire the whole neighborhood if you don't give it the respect it deserves. Please give the machine the respect it deserves. It is a CNC mill. It will hurt you if you do not treat it right. Also, wear glasses anytime the machine's spinning. Safety glasses, seriously. Um, I've had metal embedded in my eye twice. Actually, three times. I've Three times I've had to go get metal out of my eye, including one time where it rusted. And I had to go get, uh, not an operation, but more stuff. So anytime you are powering this up and the spindle is going burr, safety glasses at a minimum, please. Um, please follow the manual, the letter, and perform any additional research you deem necessary before first attempting to use it. If there's anything special, and we mean anything that you're curious about, um, we're more than welcome to ask in the Discord. Go join their Discord if you're interested. Um, links on their GitHub and whatnot. After all, special uh, to us, and we don't want you to get hurt due to lack of knowledge. And most importantly, from everyone at Millennium Design Team, have fun building your first Milo. Uh, how did you get it three times? I worked at a tool mold shop with flying metal. Occasionally stuff got in under your glasses or the one was I was a kid and I was, um, my dad was building a fence and he's like, here's a hammer and nails and some wood, go amuse yourself. And a chunk of metal just flew off a nail and got embedded in my eye. Um, it happens, it, it happens. Um, bill of materials provided here, uh, spindle selection. There, there's a whole bunch here. If you wanna know all the deets, uh, but there are some different options. Again, this is an open source project. So if you want to fully self-source this and modify it to your heart's content, go for it, okay? So if, is the music down? Okay, for those wondering, I normally run the music at like negative 30 and I'm down to negative 40. So um, how about we just have no music? Simple as that. Okay, uh, spindle selection. Milo supports two sizes of spindle, 65 or 80 millimeter. These cover the most common. Um, this kit comes with the 80 millimeter spindle. You could also use a... Uh, 2200 kilowatt spindle. You can also use a router if that's kind of your thing. Um, and then also, um, uh, cross, I like the music. Eh, too many people complain, no music. Uh, and then, uh, although there are no router mounts, so you'd have to design your own. Uh, does it have a VFD? Yes. For those wondering what comes in the kit, I'm not going to answer any questions. Go watch uh, yesterday's video because I literally spend 25 minutes going through the entire kit. So just, just check out yesterday's video and it covers everything that's in the kit. Uh, parts list and recommendation for printing guidelines. The Millennium team has provided a list, blah, blah, blah. Basically, you have to print the parts with Voron spec only with more walls. <laughs> it's Voron spec with like six walls instead of four or something like that. Um, so your parts are pretty beefcake. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm turning the music on, but not for you guys because I want the music. There we go. Um, so we have that part selection. There's a few different examples. Um, LDO is not confirmed for the market. Uh, check some of the resellers for later batches they are. Um, so my spindle's a 220. Um, I live in Canada, so it's 110, so I gotta put a 220 plug. Uh, T-nut application, blah, blah, blah. So uh, for those about the music, okay. This is the last time I talk about music. The normal music I use, the lo-fi stuff, I keep getting copyright struck. So unless somebody wants to comp me um, a month's worth of ad revenue that I lose out on every time I play that, um, I'm not using it. So I found something else that doesn't get copyright struck, but enough people are complaining. So we're not gonna bother with it. So no music. If you want music, you can play your own music. But people in chat being too complaining, so no music. Uh, Pre-flight training. Uh, before you do that, there's a whole bunch of videos here. Blah, blah, blah. This uses rep wrap, by the way. Here's all your contact info, blah, blah, blah hardware references. If you've built a Voron, this manual is going to look very, very familiar. Um, so there's that. Go through all that. This page intentionally left blank. And there we go. So now we start. YouTube music to the rest. YouTube music sucks. Let's be honest. Fine. You know what? Enough people. You guys are all complainers. Fine. Here. Fine. Ba, 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 ba. There, you can have your lo-fi beats. So because you all complain so much about the music, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do ad reads now.
to, to compensate for this. So if you want to help support the channel, the content I create or the things I do, uh, because people really wanted music and then people were complaining about the other music. So now I'm going to play music so I won't get ad revenue on this video for a month. So if you want to help support the channel, the content I create or the things I do, consider becoming a channel member, Patreon supporter, or gifting memberships to others. Um, so there we go. Okay. You ready to build? Who wants to build? Who wants to build? There we go. Before we do that, there we go. Cross 2010 gifted five community memberships. Cheers and appreciated. Rico Shammy gifted five community membership. Cheers and appreciate it. So before we get started, I pushed the add button. I never do that, but I did it because I felt like it now. Uh, can I turn my mic? Okay, you know what? Next person who mentions audio level gets a ban. Straight, straight up. Next person who mentions audio levels, I've, I've bumped everything up. Everything's okay on my end, according to my little charts and whatnot. I don't know about you, but that, that audio chart right there, I'm close to peaking. I, I, I could blow out all your eardrums, um, but I'm not. So if you complain about audio, it's on your end going forward and you'll get a timeout. Simple as that. Um, I want to build a CNC, not deal with, you know, people who don't know how to change, you know, if it's too quiet, just turn your mic up, turn your headset up. Uh, for Rico gifted five memberships, cat herder gifted five community memberships, Wayne gifted 10 cheers and appreciated. Uh, Lee Smith, five euro cheers and appreciate. Oh, sorry. Five, five quid five quid uh and i think that's it alan two dollars for the music problem blah 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 uh cool 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 audio that's it tim tim report user to youtube for being a bot there we go Done. okay wonder how loud it'll be cutting i don't know but i'm gonna have to drill some stuff so um it's gonna be a sound here hello here um five dollars for the whiners <laughs> You know what it is? It, it, I could tell I'm, I'm doing something new and I got a lot of new people here because the, the regulars know what's going on. Like the regulars know and it's the new people that are complaining. So it's it, it, it's immediately obvious. <laughs> yeah, Tim, it's been banished to the Shadow Realm. Which, by the way, for those that didn't know, um, in the Yu-Gi-Oh! show, apparently they just straight up killed people. But when they, when they dubbed it for North American audiences, uh, it's the Shadow Realm. So in the show, if you were a kid watching it and somebody got banished to the Shadow Realm, no, they just like died. They just redubbed it. <laughs> Anyways, let's build a Y axis. Okay, so disclaimer part inconsistencies. The Y axis motors have gone through a big update to make them stronger. This is something you really shouldn't have to worry about um, because you're, you're, if you're, it's not like you printed the parts for this three months ago and now you're building it. Um, so if you're building, you know, print everything now, you'll be fine. Par, 499, cheers and appreciate it. And Mark, gifted a community membership, appreciate it. Um, so Y-axis assembly, so XY plate orientation. The XY plate is not exactly mirrored and therefore needs to be oriented in the right direction in order for it to be installed correctly to make sure the plate is installed. Uh, okay, I see right here. So we have some extra holes. Okay, so we got, uh, okay, with the counter boards on the right side. Okay, I see. So the first thing we have to do is get our Y rails out. So which one are the Y whales? Also, um, for those that have never watched me do a build before, I follow the manual, especially on this. I'm gonna put a preference right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna timestamp the video right here or the stream. This is where the build starts. Um, preference, this is a brand new kit we may and most likely will run into some inconsistencies with documentation, things that need to be updated or things that might be incorrect. That happens when it's a new kit. It happens all the time. Um, so they will just revise it in the future. Um, that just kind of happens. So like right here, uh, we're starting on the Y axis. So my first tip is gonna be, okay, so there's the Y axis. So I'm assuming if we are mounting these on the bottom, they're the mid-size rails, uh, but it would have been nice if they included 
a little thing because you know what when you build a boron they give you that little chart that tells you what the extrusions are and their lengths and you know this is the b extrusion this is it so i've got three different lengths of extrusions and or rails and i don't know which one that those rails are i think the y are the medium sized ones because i'm assuming the z is the shortest and then the x is the longest because the x has got to go woo. Um, so i'm assuming it's these ones here and we have to be safe lock tight it oh shoot ha fiber tight the medium ones okay yeah oh there you go millennium machine works uh, officials in chat so if you have any questions about the kit ask them uh there you go so there we go so we're gonna do this by the book. Okay, so we got M35s, we got that. We're gonna need some of these guys. It's really nice, the LDO kit comes with a whole bunch of these rail holders. You saw nothing. Um, so we could just slide these right off onto these and hopefully we don't lose our balls. Because the last thing you wanna do is lose your balls. Because if you lose your balls, you're not going to have a nice day. Because then you're going to have to pick up all your balls, fiddle with your balls, and get them all back in where they're supposed to go. So you don't want to lose your balls. Because um, they, while they are shiny, um, sometimes they're hard to find. So, And then also for, your, for those at home, um, I've already cleaned these rails and pre-greased them. So I took everything apart um, before stream. I cleaned them all. And by cleaned them, I flushed everything with ISO, isopropyl. And then I re-greased them. And then also what I do is I spray the rails down with WD-40, but I couldn't find my WD-40, so I just used spray on white lithium. And then you wipe it off. The reason you want to do that is when you clean your rails or um, something like that, I use ISO, it dries out the metal. And the last thing you want is really dry metal because it'll rust, okay? I don't know if these are stainless. I, I'd rather not risk it. Um, so by spraying a light coat of WD-40, which is a rust preventative or a grease or something on, and then just wiping off the excess, it'll just kind of keep them a little wet. So you don't have to worry about them, uh, going bad on you. Okay, don't put that on there. That would be bad. Right there. Uh, and I need my box of motor kit, hardware kit. There we go. Because we are going to need M3 fives drag chains most likely stainless yes but i'd rather not risk it oh one of my bags opened up oh no oh no i've lost <laughs> I've lost me nuts. Specifically my M5 uh, T-nuts. So what I'm gonna do with these is just to keep the T-nuts all organized because holy shit, they're everywhere now. I'm just gonna grab my, my tray of T-nuts and I'm just gonna dump them in here. There we go. There we go. So that's the roll-in M5 T-nuts. Luckily it's all 2020, so if you, if you mix up these parts with your Voron parts, you're okay. Okay. Uh, what is it? M35s. M35s. M310s. Buttonhead. M35s. There you go. Okay. Um, I'm going to put these in another container. Where? Oh, there we go. Good old E3D. Uh, do you a flat plate or can texture plate be used? Oh, I use textured. I, I, I whenever I print ABS, I print on a textured plate. Um, I prefer it. I, um, I like the finish it gives, and I also find textured uh, build plates are a bit more forgiving to your first layer. Um, so I, I, I just find better luck and more reliable consistency with textured build plates than flat ones. Although, I will admit I am partial to the Prusa satin ones. Those ones are really nice. 
Um, there we go. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna call you Tajom. Tajom, thank you for becoming a member. And Cuffin, thank you for clocking me your memberships. Cheers and appreciate it. And now we need that plate. So, I wonder if they're in here. Yes, the machine plates are in the box labeled machine plates. So, for those wondering how big of a, uh, a workspace you have, a good indicator of that is this is the bed. So you mount your stuff to the bed. But we don't need this right now, so I'm just gonna put those right here. But I do need this guy. Yeah. Man, LDO did not cheap. Look at it, all custom cut. Oh my god. I think this is for the Z. Yeah, that's for the Z. I'm gonna take that out and put it over here. That way I don't have to deal with this box anymore. I've been a good boy. Lately, I'm very, I'm getting very good at actually throwing stuff out once it's done. Hopefully, it's only those three pieces of metal in there. Okay. So this goes on like that. So let me orientate this. So we've got, where is that extra hole? The extra hole is on this side, right there. So you can see it, it's right there. So then, these mounts, oh, it goes this way. Yeah, it goes this way because the counter bores are on the top. The counter bores are on the top, that extra hole on the right, and then these mount in here. Okay. Now, what is going to be the easiest way to deal with Loctite? I'm. What's going to be the easiest way to deal with this? Because I don't want to like have to like dip this. I, I might just pour some of this out, but it'll dry up. Do I have like a little? A little thing to put this in, like a little dropper. Let me, like a little dish or something, so I can just dip the screw in. I don't want to use a shot glass for it, but I might end up. Uh, like a bottle cap would work. Nobody drinks beer from the bottle, so bottle cap would work perfect for this. Let me see if I can find one or something, something. Nope. I'm just trying to find a small dish <laughs> that I can use to just kind of... There we go. This will work. There we go. That'll work. Oh. Okay, that's okay. For the skill testing question, have fun. The only reason the skill testing question is there is, to, is in case somebody tries to pretend to be you and win. Um, it allows me to go, Hey, so what question did you put? What did you put for the answer? And it gives me a, uh, the ability to call people out. So anytime you are putting, um, mounting something, I always recommend getting all your screws started first and then tightening them. Um, that way, if like you know, when you tighten the first screw, it's a little bit wonky and you got to put the second one in, it's still wonky. This way it kind of, they'll find their home. And yes, I know, I always kind of skimp out a little bit on the Loctite uh, whenever I do grub screws on a 3D printer. This is a CNC machine. Um, you, you don't with this. Um, if they tell you to use Loctite, you use Loctite because this thing will shred it, like shake itself apart if you do not uh, do things the right way. Like you, <laughs> this build's gonna be a little bit more methodical than a traditional 3D printer, put it this way. Um, just wait till we start squaring stuff up. Just wait till we start squaring stuff up. Grub screws are for eating. Grub screws are for eating, they are noms. Okay, that is way too much. Also, um, if you're gonna use Loctite, I use Vibratite, it's the same thing. Um, use blue. You, you can get other ones, um, but basically you don't, you don't wanna use red. Don't use red, okay? Um, so not nail polish. You, you, if, you, if you're building a CNC, for the amount of money you're spending, I would say go out and get like real Loctite. Um, the advantage with blue Loctite is you can undo it, not very easily, but it, it, it can be undone with a bit of force. Um, 
I've never actually, nail polish I find breaks a little bit too easy. Red is if you, um, put it this way, uh, when I used to do USPSA and IDP and all that, uh, you would use red Loctite to hold your compensator on. You, you need to take a blowtorch to red to get it off. Simple as that. So don't use red unless you are prepared to it never come off. And especially with these small screws, you will strip the screw before you uh, remove the Loctite. Yeah, red needs heat to remove. I will say these parts are actually really nice. Like I, I know I simp for LDO, but they deserve it. They, they put a lot of work into these kits. And unfortunately it's, well, it's not unfortunately, but I don't think Jason will be joining us today because it is Chinese New Year. So he's probably having some fun with his family. So just get yourself a little container, put some Loctite in there, and then just dip each screw in as you put it together. Can't be tight if it's liquid. Exactly. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have an oxy torch here in my house. <laughs> uh, clear nail polish we use to seal vacuum fittings in the Air Force. Yeah, but it's that's the Air Force. Like, it's the Air Force. So I've got them all started now. So now I'm going to go ahead and tighten them all. And I probably will end up um, buying an electric screwdriver. Because I got a feeling this is going to use a lot of screws. <laughs> and Linus told me that these bits won't stay stuck to the screw. Yet they stay stuck to the screw. Now, if you wanted to get really into it, you could get a um, um, properly torque these. But uh, we're just going to go by hand. I think you're using more torque than a PC build. This can do a bit of torque. The LTT Store screwdriver can do a bit of torque, but I wouldn't use it to like torque half inch screws. Like for these like M3s, it's fine. Amazon Denali. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to buy something. I, 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 I already blew this much. <laughs> we're what? We're February 9th, and I've already blown this month's budget for equipment for the channel. So we're going to have to wait a little bit, unfortunately. And the ES-126. I stopped using it because literally it didn't have enough power. It's, it's really good for getting screws started, but then you have to go in and tighten everything. Like, it doesn't tighten anything enough. Like, even M3s. Anything under M3, it was okay. It was good for the quadcopter stuff. When I did quadcopter stuff, it was pretty good. Um, so I use it when I do quadcopter stuff. But, like, tightening anything M3 or bigger, it doesn't have enough power to actually tighten them. How do you know they're aligned correctly? Um, that's a good question. I mean, once you get all four on, you, you, you could just take your rail... through okay. yeah we're we're actually out so what I'm gonna do is loosen these and then get the rail through this is gonna be fun this is the thing with CNC CNC is is oh it's fun here's the thing I'm looking at this it doesn't say anything about alignment, does it? It just says put them on. So it just says mount them. So I'm trying to verify that I have them on. That's why I put the screws in separately to see if they would, but yeah, these don't line up. What about this one? What about this one? Yeah, they don't line up. Yeah, they don't line up. So I'm going to have to play around with this. Uh, that's something they may want to add to the manual. Because it doesn't say anything about partially, like, putting them in slightly loose. 
It doesn't say anything about that. Rail carriers should always have a rail or dummy rail installed. Yeah. Be loosened later to line. If that was the case, I, then why do you put the Loctite on now? Or it should say that in here that, like, don't tighten these all the way as you will tighten them later. So what I'm going to have to do now is loosen all these, put two rails through, and then put them back on. Or was I supposed to leave them in the rails? Was I supposed to leave them in the rail? That's the thing. Orientation's right. Orientation's right. I've got the, um, see the little, the one there? And we got the one there. So orientation's right. Let me check my Discord because they, they're probably adding me going, hey, follow this. Oh, no, I don't see any notification. Oh, maybe. Uh, here we go. Okay. Oh, okay, here we go. Um so LDO had okay, this is this is more up to date, apparently. Okay, okay. Install the bolts from the rear. The four furthest holes from you will not be populated at this stage. Okay, so is that different here? Oh, no. Okay, so that doesn't mention here at all. Yeah, okay. So this manual is already out of date. The official GitHub manual is already out of date. Because see here, it uses four screws. This uses two. I didn't even see that. And it's not called out. But it's called out here. So we're going to follow this manual. So let me do this. I'll update it now. Thank you. This is why you follow the manual. And this is why, as I said at the very beginning, that things are subject to change. So yeah, it might be better to have the manual state to mount these with them on the rail still and then remove the rail if needed. Um, so that way they stay lined up. Because according to the manual, it says take the carriages off the rail and mount them, which will mean keeping it, like getting them aligned will be kind of annoying. So what we're going to do is do this. Okay, so those are cracked. So they should, yeah, we got a bit of wiggle there. Still not lining up. Let me yeah, loosen a bit more. Got to help if I loosen them all. There we go. There we go. Okay. So that one's that. There we go. Now, unfortunately, like you could get out an indicator and indicate both rails to each other to make sure they're not skewed, but I I think we'll be okay. You can always crack them later once they're mounted to the extrusions. What is the gap between these? What is the gap between these? What we got? We got... Or actually it'd be a millimeter. Is it 45? Where is... I'm assuming these are one, two, three blocks. Yeah, they're one, two, three. Do they make metric one, two, three blocks? So it's 45 millimeters between them, but it's gotta be so bang on. You trying to do that by eye is gonna be too much. So we'll just. Well, luckily swapping rails is easier the bigger the rails are. So these ones aren't too bad. Damn it. Yeah, they make one, two, three blocks for metric. They're just really small. <laughs> so for those that don't know, a one, two, three block is a block of metal that's literally one inch by two inch by three inch. It's used for setup, for squaring stuff up, 
Um, it, it's used for a lot of stuff in machining. It's like, it's like a, you use it for a lot. Um, you could find a million uses for it. Um, and this kit comes with two of them, so. But I was kind of hoping there's like, I, I didn't know if there's a metric equivalent because that's something I've never really looked into. Um, if it would be like, oh, it happens to be 45 millimeters. Cool, I could put one in there and one there and it'll keep these rails aligned, but alas, it is not. So a printed jig might work. Printed jig, jig might work. Oh, they do slide in both. Like th this does, you know, they do slide. It's just, you know, once both of these are mounted to the extrusions and locked in place, will they still slide or will they bind? But we'll find out. There you go. So there we go. So that is, uh, double check this, make sure they're all tight. Now I'm not gonna be doing what 3D Maker Noob did and do this whole build in, in one stream. <laughs> We will be doing our normal three hour stream ish. If we're in the middle of something, I'll run long. Or if we just finish something and I end early, I end early, but that's kind of the plan. And then this build will take over for Saturday, uh, Tuesdays. So the next build part of this build will be on Saturday or Tuesday. So, so I normally don't do builds on Fridays but I really want to get this started. Okay, so that is that. So now we need to put the other carriage on. So this is the X carriage, and these are M310s. Okay, so that is M310s. M310s, so those are M35s. These are M310s. Okay. So, flip the, okay, so that's gonna stay like that. So these are the longer ones. So these ones I'm gonna keep on the rail. And so the M3 heat sets into the drag chain. Okay, and we use all four. And they screw in from that side. Okay, so now I could take these carriages off finally. one there's two okay just call them one two three blocks yeah they're just called one two three blocks that like here's a, okay it depends on your location I call a vernier, I call a caliper as verniers because the tool shop I got into when I, when I was in the trade, it was just, that's what the lingo is. It, it's the same reason I call a dial indicator an inner rapid is because that's just what people called them. And that's just what I call them. I know it makes no sense, but that's what it is. Okay, why well, won't you, oh, these are M310s, not M35s. You once drilled into one? Oh, that happens all the time. That that's those that, that happens all the time. Okay. Where? What? Did I put in the wrong hole? No, is it? These holes wrong? Oh wait, I'm a dummy. <laughs> I'm a dummy. I'm putting them in the wrong way. This? Goes like this. Yeah, go this way. Go this way. There we go. I'm not a smart man. There we go. And I got the hole lined up. So we got, remember there's the one extra hole on the one side. And I got that on this side. There we go. Okay. There we go. And I won't be able to use my LTT store screwdriver to tighten these because they're too close to the carriage. Is 
zero Z with the wrong screw. Yeah, that happens. Do a good old Z negative China right into your block or the table. I, I've put, um, not my shop, but one of my uh, teachers when I was in doing my apprenticeship, they, he told me the shop he used to work at, they had a gun, uh, not a, not a gun drill. What, what's the big, no, it wasn't a gun drill. What's the big drill? It's not a scene. It's not like a bridge port. It's a, it's a vertical drill, but it's huge. I can't remember what they're called. Um, uh, what are they called? What are they called? Not a mag drill. No, it, th this is like, you could literally put like a block of steel this big on it. Um, used for drilling water lines, not a drill press. Radial arm. Yeah, it was a radial arm. I, th I think that's what it is, radial arm. Um, they had a rule where if you drilled, because they used it to drill water lines. So you would have a block of steel this tall, right? Like we're talking like 60 inches, you know, 72 inches. And you had to drill water lines through it. So normally you would drill through one side and flip it, drill through the other. But some people would just say, screw it and drill right through. And the shop had a rule where anytime you drilled through the block, if you drilled through into the table, you had to tap it and put a plug in it. So you look at the table and it has all these like random oddball size holes in it with plugs in them. because the owner didn't want holes in his table except for the holes that were supposed to be there. So anytime you put a hole in there, you had to tap it and put a plug in there, like an MPT plug or something. So, would kind of suck if you spent your day on there and you take the block off and you got like five holes there and then you had to drill, you had to tap, open them all up to a tap size and whatnot. I'm like, that would suck. Stick some googly eyes. <laughs> okay, where is the other case? Let's slide you out. Line you up. There we go. Bing, bang, boom. Go a little bit of that. Hello from Austria. Austria. Hello there. I was about to make an upside down joke. Notes. What about notes? By the way, if you try to message me on Discord when I'm live, I don't actually get notifications for it um, because it's in streaming mode. So if you send me a DM on Discord or whatever, and I need to like see it, make sure you at me in chat so I'll see to look over. Who's gonna be the first one to convert this to print plastic? It wouldn't be that hard, let's be honest. It already will run RepRap firmware. Like it, it's already gonna run RepRap firmware. So it would take like two seconds to uh, put a hot end on this. Like it uses a, a, um, a 3D printer controller. But then you could do the cool thing where you print something and then you machine it to size. Cocoa Press would be closer. They've already done that. Um, a Cocoa Press has already gotten a V0 serial number. <laughs> that was at that was at Murph last year. Can you do input shaper? Um, you probably could, I think. I don't know if the uh, the input shaper tool is compatible with the flyboards, the mellow flyboards. But you probably could, but I don't know how input shaping would work for a CNC because it's like the motion forces are not the things that are gonna impact your cut quality. It's your, 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 the fact you're shoving a, a, a spindle into metal or something. You can, but it doesn't work with CNC. There you go. Yeah, because remember input shaping, 3D printers don't have forces on the tool head. So all you have to really compensate for are just motion. Like anything that happens because of the motion of the machine. 
you're, you're not, you know, when you're laying down plastic, if all goes well, you're not actually hitting anything with your tool head. This, you have a spindle going, shoving into a block of something that you have clamped down and you're cutting chunks out of it. So it's a, it's a completely different, um, it's just completely different. Now, high end CNC machines actually do monitor chip load. So a good CNC machine, um, we had a bunch at the shop I worked at. If you were taking too much of a depth of cut, it will error out if there's too much load on the spindle because it'll go, hey, th this ain't right. Or it'll detect if your, you know, your cutter snaps and all of a sudden there's no force on the tool head and it'll error out. There we go. Okay, so that is that, that is that. Insert the M3 heat sets into the XY drape shank transition. Okay, so I can probably take these rails off now. Make sure this moves right. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over. And I'm gonna put some of these in. There we go. Bigger rails, bigger carriages that are better quality. You don't really have to worry about losing the balls that easily. Usually. Okay, so now I need this printed part and I need my heat set done. Grab this out. You come over here. Yep. Grab myself some power. What are you moving? Oh, you're moving there. Okay, so you're gonna go there, you're gonna go there. I can unplug you. Over there, you come over here. I need to put an extension on this. That's what I, I need to put an extension because it's gonna fall over the moment I plug this in. There we go. And let me get a clamp. The last thing I want is this to fall over. So we are needing M3 heat sets. Okay. M2.5. M3. Is there only one size for the heat sets? I want to make sure because there's not. There's two different sizes. So there's short heat sets and long heat sets. Um, this doesn't call out anything, so I'm gonna put the short ones here. It looks like the short ones, but there are long M3 heat sets and short M3 heat sets. Um, so the manual may wanna call that out, because it just says M3 here. So. So, oh no, I've dropped my heat sets. This is already getting heavy. This is gonna be heavy. <laughs> okay, so now I need that piece, which is, is that an accent part? Yes, it's an accent part. There we go. There we go. Uh, Discord for manual updates. What? added notes okay yeah see yeah he, they're adding notes to the github up thing uh, yeah 
Okay. Am I planning to change the printed parts for milling parts? Uh, not really. Um, maybe the motor mounts down the line. Maybe I'll, I'll machine some motor mounts. But right now, um, I've gone ahead and actually uh, printed all the motor mounts and the spindle mount and more exotic plastics. So some glass filled and carbon fiber filled stuff. Um, just to have some fun uh, and to see how long they last. So the plan is to run it for a bit stock and before we start doing fun. So what I probably actually will end up doing um, just to get hours on the machine is just make like a demo G code of it like milling pockets repeatedly forever without the spindle on. Just have it do the motions so we could see what happens if you have 100 hours on the machine kind of thing. So have it all set up as if it was cutting, like with all the, the speeds and feeds and everything, but don't actually have the spindle on just so we could see how the motors behave, how like the drag chains behave, how the, the rails behave and do all that. So I think that's what I'm gonna do once I get this up and running and we, we you know verify that it's all working. And then I'll go ahead and start putting like just demo hours on it just to make sure that it is because let's be honest, this isn't like a 3D printer. You don't run this machine lights out. Um, you're not doing 24 hour machining ops on it. So it's gonna take a while to get a lot of hours on one of these probably, or at least anywhere near like 3D printing hours. Uh, is that a modded BLMP? This is the stealth press. This is the stealth press. It's built using a lot of Voron parts. So it's got a key back in it. It uses a rail. Um, no extrusion, because it uses the rail. There we go. Okay, that is that. Turn that off so I don't burn myself. So we mounted those in. And now that mounts to that with M320s and M one M3 washer. Okay, so it goes here. Yep, there's the extra hole. So this mounts in right like here. Okay, so I'm gonna have to drill out those holes. Um, where is my vernier? So I printed these parts off of the GitHub the LDO repository, um, the printed parts have, uh, you don't have to drill out the parts like I'm doing here, essentially. Um, but because I printed these off bef before I got the link to the LDO one, I have to drill out a bunch of these parts. So, not a huge deal. Just if you are building one of these based on the LDO kit, print the parts from the LDO repository. So you don't have to do what I'm doing now and drilling out all these, uh, that sacrificial layer. And I'm gonna have to do it with the five mil ones too. The box in the P1P? Oh yeah, that's a Panda Touch. Um, next week's video might be talking about bamboo because I, I also got the parts to fix my X1 which has been down for like a month now. So the parts finally came in for my X1 so I can fix that. So I might do that in a video, replacing the, uh, the bed wire. I gotta figure out what I'm doing in the video this week. Okay, so M320s, okay, so. And M3 washers. Oh, there we go. M320s. Five washers. I don't like opening bags until I'm ready for them because I don't want to like open a bag up and then not need the parts for a while. M5 washers. Wait. Oh, here are the M3s. There we go. Only six M3 washers in this whole build. Okay.
Literally, there's only six and three washers. Okay. You get the big old box in there. Maybe, I don't know. If, if it showed up while I was live, no. But if it sh hasn't showed up, I checked before I went live. I didn't see anything, so. What wall outer am I planning to use for 220? Uh, whatever one I'm supposed to use according to building code. So we got M320 and a washer. Yeah, whatever the Ontario building code tells me to use. Oh, put in the box yesterday. Oh, okay. Well, I'll go check the, uh, the the post office tomorrow then. Normally I check on Friday, but I was running around doing some stuff like around the house today before stream, so I didn't get a chance. Plans on building an Urkfa. Um, I can't remember who said they were gonna send me a kit. If I do get a kit, I'll build it, but I'm not gonna self-source one. Um, because uh, if I do build one, I want to build a small one. Like I'm talking like a, a three, a, a four unit one, just so I could use the filament rollover feature on um, one of these V2s. Because I'll be honest, that P1P is going to go back inside. I don't, I don't think I'm going to keep it out here. Um, because once I put the Panda Touch on it, it actually won't fit on the shelf. So what I might do is put like a filament rack or something here to feed the uh, these printers. machine what software that's a good question i've had so many people ask me oh what software do you do for your cam um and i'm like i'll let you know when i figure that out because <laughs> i've never really had to do cam before um i when i used um the congro robo cnc i used carbide create which is really good if you have a dxf and you just need to cut something out but the moment you need to start doing like pockets and slopes and whatnot eh, i'm sure you could do it but I'm going to have to learn like real stuff at some point. Okay, turn this back on. So that is, here is our X plate, X, Y plate with the everything on it. Um, so that is that. I'm going to put you over here. So now I need my X and Y backlash nuts. So let's get the Y backlash nut. I think that's also, oh, that's not an accent. <laughs> Um, that's Z. This is Y. That, okay, so that's there. Oh, here's... This one's bigger, I think. Alright, so let's, let's do the Y. You gotta put heat set, heat set, heat set, heat set, and these use the bigger ones. And M5 ones. Ooh, I don't have a tip for M5. I would suggest some can software in the part one. Yeah, you can use Fusion. I know um, the Millennium Machines team is working on a post processor, which that's a whole other thing you gotta have to figure out with uh, CNC and his post processing scripts. Um, so these use the longer M3 nuts because you have to like generate your G code then you have to run it through a post processor that specifically Um, takes that G code and then makes it compatible for your machine. So one of the things I had to do with Carbide Create was manually post-process it um, because the starting G code that Carbide Create spits out is meant for the 
like the the carbide create machines like the the was it shapokos or whatever um in the nomad and rep wrap firmware wouldn't handle it it would it didn't like it so i'd had to like change the order of some of the operations at the start for like spinning up the spindle and whatnot Sends heat set tips in the kit. They do? Okay. Well, the downside is I'm going to have to wait for this to cool down to swap it to the, M3, the M5. So I'm going to have to get my, my manual iron and do those ones. So. Let's take a lot of heat. I don't think the M3 will fit in the M5. Yeah, these are big heat sets, okay. And then there's two M5s in the back. Let me see if I can push them in with this one. I don't think I can, I don't wanna risk it, but let me, let me just take a look at you. Good God, those are big. Okay, don't hold it from that side and burn yourself. Start straight. Come on. I don't want to burn myself. Because it's near, we're still near the start of the build. I don't want to burn myself already. Uh, where are my... Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Are the capabilities of this machine material-wise? Um, plastics, wood, aluminum, very, very, very light steels if you know what you're doing. But personally, I wouldn't go past aluminum. This will cut aluminum pretty decently, in my understanding. Yeah, let me let me get a proper M5. That ain't, that's too jank. Um, tools, tools. So let's see. Tools. Yeah, let me let me get the proper one here. that Ooh. recommend printing the LDO and lead the rotate nine degrees and easier to adjust um, whatever LDO recommends um, I printed so I did print um, the LDO specific stuff I did print the LDO specific stuff I, I did print whatever the whatever the LDO specific stuff is. I printed it. Um, let me find my extension cord. One second. Where is my extension? Where is my extension cord? Yeah, this will work. Oh yeah, this is how you know it's good. Because I printed all this like a month ago, I think. And yeah, you know it's good when it's like the, your, your extension cord doesn't have a ground. Go. Plug you in here. There we go. Now we wait for this to heat up. Any enclosures compatible? Um, they are working on an enclosure for this uh, called the Casa. If you go on their Discord, you can find pictures of it and whatnot. Um, for now, I'm gonna I'm gonna run it open air, um, and just you know wear safety squints. Um, cause I don't have any super huge, big projects, but down the line, I do want to get a mister for it. I don't want to do flood coolant. I think flood coolant is way over at, I'm hoping I don't do anything that I ever need to put flood coolant in, but I would like to get a mister. Um, also having to run an air compressor while the machine's running would be kind of annoying. Um, now we're going to wait for this to heat up. Uh, 
Oops, sorry, I have it. I had it set for live top chat, not live chat. Now I see everyone's chat. There we go. There we go. Um, so while this is heating up, what are you guys up to? What are you up to? What what uh, does it come with a bottom tree? No, this doesn't come with any enclosure stuff. This kit does not come with any enclosure stuff. Uh, the Milo team is working on designing an enclosure. Um, I don't know if it'll be a self-source thing or if LDO will ever do kits for it. Probably not because the problem with um, the enclosure is the panels are huge and shipping those around kind of sucks. Um, but we'll see. I'm not going to say no, but as it is right now, any enclosure for this is going to be a DIY thing. So I might just, you know, go get some Coroplast and some like one by ones and just build a really cheap one just to keep, you know, chips and whatnot from flying all over the place. Um, Cause I, I, I'm not gonna be doing any coolant at first. Cause you know, you, you have to test it as it comes in my opinion. So since this is a brand new kit, I'm basically gonna build it as it is and judge it based on what it comes. And then um, go from there. Uh, how's the fan on Magneto X? I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, but I will say the VZ bot behind me is the loudest printer I own. But I will also say the VZ bot knocked out all the parts for a, uh, a fallout laser pistol in 18 hours. Perfectly. <laughs> so yeah. If you're wondering what I'm doing, after I push the heat set in, I flip it over and I, I hold it. Ooh, let me turn this off. That's on. Um, I hold it against the, the to make sure it's flat. Okay. I gotta do any heat setting now. Okay, so I've done the Y axis backlash nut. Okay, fasten these. So our okay. Let me let me put the heat sets in this part too, since we're here right now. So let me turn this back on. So we got three big ones and then small ones. Okay. Push in with my finger. <laughs> I mean, if I get hurt, the stream ends. If I get hurt that bad, the stream ends. You don't want the stream to end, do you? Got your Nighthawks? Nice. You might melty, 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 melty. There we go. No ER stream. <laughs> Only works with asbestos. Oh man, I knew I should have got my asbestos gloves. I could feel the heat. There is so much heat coming off these M5 heat sets. I've never used M5 heat sets before. These are beefy. And again, you want to make sure that you are not cooking the plastic. And also you, because, actually, let me a bit more, there we go. You want to have these set, in my opinion, a little bit below the surface because this, these have to sit flat against whatever they're, they're sitting against because this is what drives your motion. So if they don't line up, um, you're probably going to have a bad day. Like, you, you don't want this like this. It needs to be perfectly flat. There we go. Yeah, this is the only downside. You're using two different types of heat sets and considering how hot these get, these irons, if you got like a press like I got, there's no way to like quickly swap between them unless you have some nice like heat proof gloves. <laughs> so I just using two irons. Normally what I recommend is when you do a build like this, um, have the manual open, have your box of printed parts next to you 
and also have your heat sets. Go through the manual, make sure you have all the printed parts, and as you come across parts that need heat sets, put the heat sets in. That way, one, you go through the manual the first time, you make sure you have everything, and two, you put your heat sets in. So when you go to do the actual build, you don't have to stop to put heat sets in. Um, but since we're, we're doing this like educationally, I'm not doing that. Cause I don't want to like do something off screen that, you know, somebody might miss out on. I'm just making sure these are flat. There we go. Okay. This flat. Yep. That's flat. Okay. Now I can put these ones in. Oh, these are the long ones. Over here. Hi, Steve. I will say, I wish these parts had more of a, a taper for the heat sets like the Voron ones do. Because the Voron parts, you can you can put the heat set in and they'll just kind of stand there and then you can push them in. These, it's a little bit more of a pain to line them up. They don't really line up as easily. They kind of fall over and you have to like use the heat set to kind of pick them back up. Everyone say hi, Steve. Steve's here. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be building a shed? It's being built right now, almost done. Oh shit. So are they like building it wood frame from scratch or is it like a kit just like you could buy it somewhere and you just, somebody's putting it together for you? They build the walls at the local factory, then assemble it on site. Nice. Tell them to come put a shed in my backyard next. Because I'm already trying to plan out how to turn the other half of this garage into a shop. <laughs> but I got to put a shed in the backyard first so I can put, you know, my lawnmower back there. Because you guys are lucky there's no such thing as smell vision yet. Because the amount of streams last summer where I was out here streaming in the garage and it just smelled like gasoline and, and fresh cut grass because I just cut the grass before stream or something and the lawnmower was like five feet from me. Um, yeah, that was fun. Okay, so there we go. So we got that and that. So turn that off. Okay, so we've got those heat sets in. So now we need to put these in. So where are these? Are these in this or are they in another box? They are in this box. Okay, so we have fasten the least gear on each side. And each side. Is there no spring in the middle? I guess there's no spring in the middle. Okay. I guess there's no spring in the middle. Every time I've done like backlash stuff, there's a spring in the middle, but I guess these ones just don't have a spring. Okay. So I need four of these. How loud this is gonna be? Loud. I no ifs, ands, or buts. It's a CNC machine. It's gonna be loud. CNC go. Nadir, use your imagination. Imagine what noise a CNC makes and let me know. But yeah, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is a CNC machine. It is gonna be loud. And I send you a short fur, uh, send you a short first with some tips. Don't install it. Wait, you're gonna send me a short first. Okay. One second here. We got, we got to get some, we got to get our education on. Um, apparently I got to watch a video first before I put these together. So we got to wait. I'm going to put one in. I'll put one in each one. I'm, I'm going to roll the dice and put one in each one first. Oh, there we go. Oh, we got it. Never mind. Okay. Um, you just linked my stream. You just linked my stream. Uh, 
I'm like, I know I'm live. I'm watching you right now. <laughs> uh... Oh no, I just opened it up. It was just this. It was literally a link to the stream. Waiting on a video. I'm assuming he's filming it right now. Oh, there we go. Is it? Is there? Is there no audio? Okay, how do? Freaking YouTube shorts. Okay, we get this question a lot on the Discord. Where's the audio? Not on the mic. Oh, there. And how tight it should feel like. So the idea of this contraption is to take out the small play and the least too much, so that you don't get any backlash on your machine, which can cause inaccuracy and bad sense of finish. So in here, I went ahead and unscrewed one of the screws on the y-axis to show you the backlash I'm talking about. Yeah, so backlash is bad. As you can hear, and probably see, you need to adjust it. Fortunately, if you follow my guide on how to build your miner, it's quite simple. Take your allen key, for y-axis type in this screw, for x you can access the screw from here, and for the z, move your z to the bottom and you should see the screw from the top. Okay. Now, on how tight it should be, you want to eliminate the sticking sound. It shouldn't be too tight, but you can pull it with your finger though. Maybe just a bit more grip than usual. I get this question a lot on Discord. Okay, so basically, um, um, tighten one and leave one of them somewhat loose, and then tighten it once it's together. Is that is that what I just saw? Basically, snug not to. Okay. So, it's gonna be a problem. This might be a problem. One second. Yeah, it's gonna be a problem. Um, this is the problem. So when I when I put the heat sets in, a bunch of plastic mushed in. Um, so I can't actually put these in. These don't fit in the hole. One second. Do I have a um, what's the idea of these? Can I Oh wait, wait, wait. <laughs> one second, one second. What's the ID? What's the ID or OD? Ten mil? 10 mil. Hey, you're getting into CNC. -ing. Go buy some reamers. You're going to want to buy reamers. <laughs> 10 mil drill works. I don't have metric drills. <laughs> I don't actually have metric drills. All my drills are inch because I live in North America. There we go. What is a reamer? Um, a reamer reams. It, 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 it's a reamer. It, it, it's basically, so you know how a drill drills a hole? Okay. Well, a reamer does kind of the same thing, only more accurately. Okay. Wow, these, these heat sets are really close to that. <laughs> so... What ends up happening is, wow, these are, okay, there we go. There we go. Um, doesn't say to use Loctite here, so I'm not using Loctite. Um, should I use Loctite here? It doesn't say to use Loctite. Um, so, okay, when you drill something, you got your drill, right? You get your drill bit and you drill a hole. So this is a, a quarter inch drill. The hole isn't actually quarter inch. It'll it'll vary. There's a little bit of wobble and whatnot. So when you use, say you need to make something that fits like a quarter inch pin exactly. Okay, uh, Loctite for everything. Okay, Loctite for everything in this build. Um, so say you need something to fit like a 10 millimeter pin. Okay. What you would do is you would drill the hole to like 9.75 millimeter with a drill, which would probably open up to like 9.8, 9.85. And then you go in with a reamer slowly with like cutting oil and you, you get that to size. So the reamer sizes your hole essentially. 
So if you're doing something where it needs to be like bang on for size, you use a reamer. Um, if you don't, if it just needs to be like clearance, you use a drill, simple as that. So usually if you're drilling a hole to like just put a screw through, it's clearance. So just use a drill. But if it needs to like fit a pin that needs to be bang on on location with no slop, that's where you use a reamer. So you would drill it under size and then ream it to your final size. You could also bore it out if you have the equipment for that and whatnot. Um, don't get Loctite on the ABS. Yes, don't get Loctite on your ABS. It'll cause it to crack. Be very careful with the Loctite. Although I'm not using Loctite, I'm using Vibrotite. And I don't know which side I'm not supposed to tighten, tighten, but we'll see. So snug, but not tight. It's the boring part of the stream. I mean, it is what it is. Just wait till we... <laughs> Just wait till we get to the part where I start squaring everything up. It's more the Y axis. Okay. There we go. Make sure we don't get a Loctite. So there we go. So that looks like that. There's our heat set. So there's that. So this is the X. This is the Y. I wish I, I need to mount my vice. My, my vice. Ooh. on the heat set. There we go. Yeah. What is a CNC it's equivalent of a slicer? Um, cam software. Usually. Computer aided machining software, CAM software. Slight, okay, here's the thing. If you're coming from 3D printing to CNC and you expect CAM to work like, like a slicer where you just like load in your, your, your file and it'll just spit out the G code, you are, you are in for a world of fun, put it that way. It is nowhere near um, that beginner friendly. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to be in for a world of fun when that when you figure that out. It is nowhere near as easy to use. It is it is a lot more manual. You have to you literally have to like tweak and adjust like everything. It is nowhere near as, you know, load and go like a slicer. And no, it's not this isn't like a Perusa where you have all these pre-made profiles and everything and it just worked. No, 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 unfortunately no. Speeds and feeds! What am I using for cam software? I have no clue yet. <laughs> We're gonna learn together. Okay, make sure we got none of that. Okay, so that is that. So this one is done. That one is done. Fasten the Y axis anti backlash nut to the bottom of the XY plate using that. Okay, so what is the bottom of this plate? Um, this goes like that. And this goes this way. Yep. And that uses M516s. Uh, excuse me. Uh, button head cap screws. There we go. I'm gonna have to print more of these trays. I'm already using more. Okay. Uh, okay. Be a good boy and actually put my stuff away this time. Right. Yeah, there we go. Uh, what's up with Voron CNC? I don't know. If I knew, I wouldn't tell you because I, I can't. Okay. Um, okay. Here's a question. Um, this is offset. So this is it in the middle. So how do I know which one goes where? 
Wait, wait, okay, okay, so, okay, so the rounded side faces away from the printed part. Okay, the rounded side faces away from the printed part. Okay, goes this way. Take one of these screws out so I can see what I'm doing. Just take both screws out. A little bit of dabble, do ya? You don't need to go crazy on the Loctite. Dabble, do ya? Usually. M3 16s or M5 16s. Again, try and keep it from getting on your printed parts because a lot of this stuff will degrade printed plastic. Go. Also, try not to knock off your uh, your rail, your carriage uh, things. We're doing dabs now. Uh, if you want, not my particular favorite thing, but if you know whatever floats your boat, whatever floats your boat. Okay. So there we go. So now we have. That on as we lose my carriage protector again. Okay. Okay. Uh, anti backlash nut. When the machine is fully assembled, the rear of the X Y axis anti backlash nut is almost impossible to access due to the proximity of the main column. To aid in making preload adjustments, the Y axis machine is assembled. You should fully tighten the brass lead screws nuts that face the main column. Uh, this is the one installed on the square face rather than the one on the round face. Okay. So make sure. This side is fully tight. Use a Loctite stick, which you find um, less wasteful. That's true. Um, however, my Vibratite um, has the advantage of I, I borrowed it from work. So I didn't pay for it. And it's a giant jug of it. Well, a pretty decent bottle that I probably won't run out of anytime soon. So, okay. Now we put the other one on, fasten the X axis using M516. Now, does this one have an orientation? Does this one have an orientation? Oh, it, it, it's already indexed. There's, there's two holes in one hole, so it can only go one way. Okay. There we go. Uh, it wasn't a five finger discount. I got it out of the fastenal cabinet for use when I built tools at work. And when I when I quit working at the shop, um, I took my toolbox home and it just happened to still be in my toolbox because it's a consumable. Like this, it, it's like I took this out of the fastenal machine and threw it in my toolbox. This thing's probably like four years old now. And I quit working there two years ago. I don't think they're gonna wanna, they, they went through my toolbox when I left and they didn't take it. So I got to keep it. <laughs> Yeah, steel, strategic transfer of equipment to another location. Yep. Somebody else watches, um, what is it, Fat Electrician? Is it Fat Electrician? I don't remember what it's called. Something electric. Fat Electrician? Parting gift. No, parting gift if I had kept the air tools. Ain't a war crime the first time. Exactly. And if you win the war, you get to decide what the outcome is. <laughs> it's funny. There's like a whole group of YouTubers from that area that all hang out together that I watch. Like the whole, um, you know, Donut Operator, Brandon Herrera, all that. Although I wish Brandon didn't do politics bullshit and just stuck with making cool guns. But yeah, whatever. You do whatever you want to do. I'll never vote for you because I can't. I'm not American. And also not my thing anyways. There we go. Okay. That's good. That's good. 
Joe Biden ain't my president. <laughs> oh, politics. Unsubscribe. I've never actually watched that podcast. I just watch their YouTube stuff. Vlogs. I, I, I have a second monitor on my computer that just always has videos playing, so they just come up. Um... Deep backlash, each access to the anti backlash block. No, okay. For that, they do this by driving two brass lead screws. So, okay. In order to do this work, the preload required to drive each nut needs to be tuned by hand to tune the preload. Okay, so I watched the video on that. What you may want to do um, is have that video actually linked here. Um, yeah, you may want to actually just have the that, that backlash video either linked here or make a dedicated one specifically uh, for it, Jake. That way, um, it, there's the videos there. You can you just put the video in here. Simple as that. Um, yeah, this is a very new manual. Like, I didn't even know this existed until today. So, okay, why access bearing block? Okay, so let's plug in my heat set and get this guy going. So I think our XY assembly is done-ish. So I'll put you over here. I don't know which way goes which. I'm assuming Y goes front to back. I don't know which way's the top on this. Okay, so what do we need here? Y axis mounting block. Okay, so that is which part? Is it this part? It's this part. So this is um, carbon fiber polycarbonate copolyester. And it's annealed. So I need a five millimeter drill bit. So what's the, is 316 close to five mil? No, 732 close to five mil. 5.5, that might be a little too much. Let me go digging through the old work stuff. I need a five millimeter drill bit. 6.3. Six. One of these days, I'm actually just going to buy metric drill bits. 6.3. Five. There we go. Well, 5.06. I can dig it. Also, the way I use the reamer is not how you do it. You don't actually chuck a reamer. You put it in a, um, a call it. Number seven. Um, I don't even know what this one is, but we'll go with it. Um, this side. These go in from the back. Okay. So we got some big chunky boys here. Uh, the markdown manual isn't done yet. Just that yeah, nine mile the guy who is really busy with money. Left. That's fine. Is, is this the markdown menu? What I'm using right here? Is that what that's called? Like, here's the thing. Remember, I'm only working on this once a week. Well, this week I'll be working on it twice. So I'm working on it today and then Tuesday. But then it'll just be every Tuesday after. So... For the engineer's black book fund. Um, you mean... Yeah. Well, mine's blue. Oh yeah, if you want to get into machining, you have to buy this book. I don't care what version of it is. I don't care if it's 50 years old, but if you do machining, you need to get this book. It's got everything you would ever want to know about machining in here. Go, Just buy one. You might only ever use it once because we have the internet nowadays. We have the internet nowadays, so you can just Google this shit. But you should at least have that book on hand. Because at one point, at some point, it will you will need it. I guarantee it. Okay, did I leave this off? Yeah, that's still off, but this one's on. Okay. So put some heat sets in here. Hopefully this melts pretty good. 
Yeah, it does. Okay, it's good. I'm going to have to clean out these holes after. Hold on a second here. Uh, did I miss something? Oh, $10. Oh, yeah, sorry. Cheers for the 10 Uh, Derek. Derek, Derek, Derek. Derek. Yeah. Okay. Plastic mushed into that hole. One second. Let me clean this out so I don't get that happen again. Heat press is just for show. No, the heat press is set up for three mil. I've got the heat press is set up for three mil. This is set up for five mil because there's two different size heat sets you use for this build. So this way I don't have to keep swapping the tip. I can just swap the heat. I can just grab another heat set. So, I smell burning. Machining handbook 31167. So Cedric, what you do, you don't buy it new because here's the thing, math hasn't changed. It's not like math is different now than it was 20 years ago. Go look for an old copy, buy an old copy. Mine is, I literally got mine from some old crotchety fuck at the shop I worked at when he quit. He's like, here, you're new, take this. And he threw the book at me. Literally, he threw it at me. <laughs> there was this old guy who got fed up with working in the trade. <laughs> like, uh, kind of like how I did. Only I kept my book. <laughs> but yeah, he literally, as he was leaving, he like walked by where I was at because that was like the newbie area of the shop. Um, the prep group and I was blowing chips out of a water line. And he's like, do you have the book? And I'm like, what book is that? He's like, here, you're going to need it. And he threw it at me. He's like, take it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I've used it twice. In like a decade of owning it, I've used it twice. Drondor! Gifted five community memberships for burninating the countryside. Cheers. So, one thing I'm going to mention here, because I know a lot of people like their pine soles for heat setting. I really don't like doing heat sets, especially manually. It's different with one of these. It's different with a press. But just to put it in perspective, M5 heat sets actually take a decent amount of force to push in. If you are doing something like a pine sole, or this is my TS-100, think about it. You're pushing it in like this. This is all smooth. Oop. Oh no, burn. This cheap $10 Amazon heat set at least has like a, a bump there. So as you're pushing down, you're actually pushing against something. It's like, you know how swords have the, 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 the pommel? You have a pommel on this. So if you're doing this manually, it, I, I find it's better to have an iron with the, the pommel essentially. So that way you have something that you're pushing against. You don't want to accidentally be using a Pine Solar TS-100 and as you're pushing your hand goes eh. And because you're squeezing, you grab the hot tip and burn three fingers. So. That's why I don't use my TS-100 for heat sets. Also, I, I like having a cheap iron dedicated for heat sets instead of using my good iron for uh, heat sets. Okay, so these holes, I gotta clean them out. So hopefully I don't... Wow, that is... Really gummy plastic. There we go. If I was working on this and you weren't here, I'd have my air compressor on. Just so you guys are aware, I'd be using my air compressor. Uh, maybe a small. Sure, I need to push. 
plastic out of this. As I pushed it in, some plastic got in the hole. I got to clean it out. That worked. Access bearing block, and that's going to need two. So let's turn that on. So that one looks like that. Okay. There we go. This is one of the. So the, some of the LDO parts I did print. You can see how they have the. I don't have to drill them out. They do that cross hatch thing. Um, the parts off the GitHub you have to drill out. So download the parts off the um, the LDO repository, and you won't have to drill them out. Program five axis parts and Siemens NX thirty thousand dollar license, but that's extreme for me. Oh God, yeah. I'm trying to remember what the the shop the shop I worked at. We had power mill, and then we had something else that the um, what machines were they? Not Kuka machine. Oh, shoot, what were the machines that we had a ton of? I'm trying to remember, but they they also were like a fifteen thousand um, dollar a month license or something stupid like that per per seat. I think that's half the reason the shop switched from having uh, machinists program their machines to just having like a dedicated guy who did programming and then having a minimum wage or very shitty wage um, operator run the machine because of how much the licensing was for the cam software for these machines. They, um, it was just easier to have a guy just programming full time for it to be worth it. You couldn't like him, if he was setting up a tool, it was a waste of money. Uh, not uh, master cam. No, it was it was more expensive. They used it for the um, the machines we used for finishing, like finishing, not roughing, like actually like finishing the the, the mold surface. Um, I'm trying to remember what <sighs> they were Makinos of some sort. I can't remember the exact model of Makino, but they were Makinos. Whoa, okay, shove some bearings in. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we're doing little things in. Blah! Bearings, okay. Okay, what I'm gonna do is don't do what I do and cut boards myself. There we go. So what do we got? 608 ZZs and 60F608 ZZs. Are those M2.5? No, they're M3s. Why, were they supposed to be M2.5s? Shit. Shit, they are supposed to be M2.5s. Crap. Crap, those are supposed to be M2.5s. <clears throat> Why you do this to me? Why you do this shit? Crap. Okay. Um, yeah, I just looked at them like, oh, here we go. Okay, how am I going to get those out? You know what? Screw it. I'm just going to use M2. What is it for? Just, uh, it's for the, uh, limit switch, right? I'll make it work. I'll make it work. I'll make it work. I'll make it work. Don't you worry about it. Don't you worry about it. What? We have this little trick called, I just tap the limit switch. <laughs> so, shh. You saw nothing? I put M2.5s in there. Okay. Yeah, we're just going to tap the limit switch. No worries. This is what happens when I look at the picture. So how many we got here? We got two on each side. Okay, so two on each side and then one on each end. Okay. No limit switches. Uh, you don't want to do sensorless on a CNC machine. You do not want to do sensorless on a CNC machine. Let me be the, the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth person to say that. You do not want to do sensorless on a CNC machine. <laughs> okay, so, um, the same, so two, one, two, two. Okay, so there's not, oh, there's a little bit of slop. Mm. Yeah, they, ooh, that's not great. There is a little bit of play here. I don't think it'll be an issue, but.
This side has no play. They're captured, it's okay. Okay. This side's tight. Oh, come on. Why aren't you going? Er, that's why. Yeah, these are just to keep like the um That side's good. So this side has slop, that doesn't. Woo. This isn't too bad, don't worry. It's support, not precision. Yeah, this is this is the opposite end, I believe, of the this is the side the motor mounts to. So the motor mounts on this side. This is just the the side you can by the way, um Jake, I I, I know the knobs are cool, 3D printed and all. The 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 handles on them should really be removable. Because those are um, what I what we call in the trade nut slappers when that machine is boogieing. Um, those things don't. Oh my God, that thing's a nut slapper. Just just load up, find a video on YouTube of the Milo doing. Here, let me let me put it. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. Uh, okay, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? This one. So imagine you're standing in front of your CNC and it does a rapid, um, and then this guy right there. So see this, this is right here. So imagine you're leaning over your machine and it does a rapid and you just, you're, 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 you happen to be a male and you're just kind of, there's a reason on bridge ports, they usually have like um, a limit switch. So like you have to like push the knob in, especially the Z axis on a lot of bridge ports. Um, you have to like push the handle in before you could turn it. Um, and there's like a limit switch. So like there's a spring that pushes the handle out to disengage it from actually spinning if it's moving under ma uh, machine power. So that way the spindle doesn't, you know. So yeah, nut slapper. Okay, anyways. Oh, cool, extrusions, sweet extrusions. Okay, cool. Um, are you off? You're off, sweet, sweet, sweet. Let's get some extrusions. Heck yeah. Extrusions, baby. Which one do we need here? The Y-axis motor mount is the 430C beam. Do you have metric? You don't have metric. Do I have a metric thing to measure these? No. Hopefully they're all the same size. They are not. Shit. Where's my, I'm assuming I don't have a Google out here. Where's my other... I have a measuring tape that is metric, but I don't know... Oh, here it is. This one's metric. Okay, 430. Yeah, this one. Okay. There we go. And it's a Starrett. So 430, 430. Good job, LDO. Bang on. Okay. Uh, fasten the Y-axis motor mount to the 430C beam using five, M512s, okay. You are M510s. M512s, are you buttonhead? Yes, they are buttonheads. The wifey's out right now with the little guy doing whatever. She's bringing home pizza for dinner. Wait. Okay. So two M512s on the end. So let's grab this. And this just mounts in there like that. Okay. Oop, heat set. So make sure these, oop. Yeah. says 470. Yeah, that's what I said, 470. 470. Do, 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 there we go. Just gonna like a little dab 
do you? And this mounts with two screws. So I've got four holes here. So which ones do I use? So I've got four holes, but it says use two. So which two? Oh wait, nope, that mounts up. I see, I see. Okay, I see. So it's the it's the bottom hole. There we go. That makes sense. And again, try and, and, and keep Loctite from getting on your screws or in the plastic. Wait, what the heck is going on? Oh. What the heck is going on here? Why don't you line up? What is going on here? Did I say 4:30? Oh, also, you have my phone number, Timmy. Okay. Anyways, no, I said 4. I said 4, did I say 4:30? I meant to say 4:70, and this is 4:70. I'm I, I am just you know, English is a language I speak occasionally, um, but not today apparently. Okay, this part. <sighs> Does not want to screw into. You. I might swap this out. Oh, wait, no, I'm dumb. I don't want to use this part. Shit. I forgot. This is a bad part. This is a misprinted part. I grabbed the wrong one. I wanted to use this one. That's right. I screwed up. I screwed up. I grabbed the wrong one. I mixed it up. My bad. I screwed up. This is a failed part print. I'm using a failed print here that, that came out funky that I didn't even realize. This is the one. This is polycarbonate. That's what I wanted to use. I grabbed from the wrong container. Which sucks, because now I gotta put the heat sets back in, but. I've got two bins beside me here. One has the printed parts. And the other one has the printed parts, but the failed ones. And the reason I kept them is because some of them aren't bad, but they're like the GitHub version of it. And some of them are the LDO version. So I, I kept them just in case something was wrong with the Git, the, the LDO version. So I could just switch over easily. Um, yeah, my bad. One second. Let me fix this quick. I just got to put some heat sets back in this. Two seconds, two seconds. Yeah, yeah, this makes way more sense. Yeah, that wakes, yeah, that makes way more sense. <laughs> like, why do these just not work, line up right? Because the part warped and I didn't realize it warped until after I'd finished printing everything and I was going through everything the other day. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll reprint these in uh, polycarbonate then. Now we gotta wait for the sign to heat up. Oh well. Do the rest of the stream. Mon français n'est pas très bien. Je peux parler juste un petit peu de français. Mais non, mon français comprend ici bibliothèque Pamplemousse. Uh, il y a un cochon dans mon pantalon. S'il vous plaît. Merci beaucoup. J'aime beaucoup Poutine. Tabarnak. Québécois. Uh, these gotta heat up. Got your first printer, SVO6 Plus. They have a Plus version now? Nice. Uh, set up for the Pine Clipper. Awesome. Do the anti backlash sets? No, I, I'm doing this. 
I'm following the manual. It's not like I'm waiting. If I was, if I had to like print something, I, I would do something else, but I, I gotta put heat sets in here. Oh yeah, this polycarbonate's a lot more temperature resistant. All the polycarbonate parts for this, by the way, are annealed. So I, I did anneal everything that, you, you know, calls out to be annealed. Oh, that is a tight. The manual version I'm looking at is wrong. Oh, Cedric, so you're telling me the manual that I was specifically told to use by the maker of this kit is wrong? I only speak kit dub on neck given. I only speak English in deep south. Excuse me, miss. I speak jive. Look up a few lines. What do you mean look up a few lines? About what? The redesigned motor mount is shorter than the original design. Yeah, they're talking about like a, a revision from a while ago. I understood that reference. <laughs> Cut me some slack, Jack. Mama no raise no dummy. Read the tag comment from Milo Mills. Where? I want you to switch to the GitHub manual. Okay, I'll switch to the GitHub manual here. There we go. A uh, little up yellow line block anti backlash nut tuning. Yeah, anti. Yeah, this was the video. Is this some like what about it? This was the video, and you do it. The video showed it being assembled to do this. So is this? Should I do it now and then also with it together? Because earlier he told me just do it in the video, and the video said when it's assembled. So should I like do it now and then tune it also later? Can you make a guest voice appearance? Yeah. One second. Call me on Discord. Call me on Discord. Harder to reach after. I know they're harder to reach after they assemble, but he sent me a, a, a short showing me how to do it with them being assembled earlier. So. Okay, I'm going to put these in now. But yeah, just, just call me on Discord if you, if you want to talk, uh, Jake. No, I don't have WhatsApp. I know, I know you, you British people like your WhatsApp, but we don't, we don't use that here. Yeah. See. Okay. Now this works. Okay. Still tight, but I'm gonna sign up for what? Yeah, we don't use WhatsApp in North America. It, it's like it's because texting has pretty much been free since forever, so nobody really uses WhatsApp because like we just text, like we just use our phones and just text.
Yeah, most calls are free. Yeah, so for us, like, WhatsApp is completely, like, no point. Because it, it, our phone, like, just texting does the same. And before that, back in my day, we had Baby M. So in, it was, I don't know if it was the same in the States, but before, like, Androids and everything, everyone who was cool had a BlackBerry for Baby M. I had a BlackBerry. Okay, one second. I don't know if I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you. And you're on your their stream's gonna hear you too. Okay. Awesome, that? yeah, that's fine. Um so it does say it in the online manual, but it doesn't have the picture uh that the GitHub manual does. Uh basically you need to uh pre tune the nuts before uh, you put them into the screws. The video I sent you was for later on, like if you get any okay. backlash that's still there, so you don't, so you don't have to take it part in entirely. Okay, I, I I pulled up the GitHub manual. There we go. Okay, so pre-tune them now, and then fine-tune them later, basically, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, I'll do that right now then. Cheers, bud. Sorry about that. No, oh, no, that's fine. It's just, it, it, it's when you got 20 cooks in the kitchen, it's like, well, you just told me to do this. So, okay. So I'll, let me find an extrusion. I'll figure this out. Okay. And in the call. Oh, wait, he already left. <laughs> okay. Get rid of these guys. Okay, pre-tuning time. So, so basically back this out until we're good. Back to using pagers. Uh, if you work in medical, they still use pagers quite often. Can't even get it to go through. <laughs> it won't even go through. Um, let me just crack these nuts right loose then. Right loose. I. I okay, you know what? <sighs> fun way then. Take the screws right out. Yeah, remove the screws. That's what I'm doing. Because it might have to index. It might not be indexed correctly, right? So. There we go. Okay, so that's that. But now it's way out. Let's rotate it back into its home position as much as I can. Go this way. Nope, I can't. Okay, so that is gonna go right there. Okay, so it's, ah, dang it. It's like an eighth of a turn. Yeah. And we still have slack in that. So now you use the screws to get rid of Backlash. So you tighten the screws up. Get rid of backlash. A little bit of grease on the rod. Okay. So I'm screwing from the back. So the back is the Bible, because the back you don't adjust. You just adjust the front, because you can see the front from the machine while it's operating. So if you gotta tweak them, you can do that easily. So we'll just tighten them a little bit. There we 
there. So slightly, ever, almost there, almost there, almost there. So we're just ever so slightly tightening them down. So we got the moves. We got no backlash. There we go. There we go. Okay, that's good. Okay, so that's that one. Okay, and now this one. Um, the motor's on this side, I believe. So this is the side you don't adjust. So put a little bit more grease on this. So let me just loosen these out. There we go. I think we're good. Yeah, I don't feel any play, and that still moves. It, you could tell there's there's no play there. There we go. There we go. With all the new data, awesome. Remember, I if you may be sitting at home going, "Why is he doing that?" It's because like. I'm trying to find faults in the manual as well while I do this. So I, I'm trying to come at it like potentially anyone could so that if we find minor deficiencies, they could be fixed. So that way somebody three months from now doing this doesn't run into any, you know, we're just trying to remove as many, many potential pitfalls and, you know, miscommunications or, you know, errors in whatever as possible now before people start getting their hands on these kits and building them. Right? So that's kind of the goal of this. So yes, I am building the kit. So if you are following along at home in the future, watching this building yours, but please make sure you actually have the manual open and use my videos as a reference and the manual as the Bible. Like, cause the last thing you want to do is, you know, be following the video only. And this video is out of date because, you know, better instructions came out essentially. So do I stick on this one or do you want me to go back to this? So stick on the GitHub manual or go back to that? Cause this is, see, this is so outdated. This is the old design and this is the current one. So I'll, I guess I'll stick here. So let's put this front part on now. Use the manual as well. You want me to roll joints from the pages? <laughs> Wait, why is this not sitting flat? Oh, the printed part. Okay. Um, so this goes like that. So we have this part with our bearings that fall out on the inside goes in like that. And then we use, what is it? M5, M512s. Ooh, that's not good. Um, always make sure there's no chips in your tap holes. Because sometimes when they tap them, there is a little bit of uh, chips and thread. So always make sure those aren't there when you tighten it. Otherwise, um, you'll be able to get the screw in once. And if you ever have to get the screw out, good luck. Uh, it's high pitch, will move fast with a lot of force to transfer the motor. Motors can handle it. They're strong. Hopefully. For a smaller pitch in that case bruno just like this is the, the joy lead screws are not expensive you, if you want to change the pitch on it just just literally just order different lead screws and just swap them out yeah cross threading is nature's loctite
four millimeter pitch, but my rapids are, there you go. Loctite. Remember, every screw you put in to metal, even the heat sets, put Loctite on it. And then try and keep the Loctite from getting on the plastic parts as much as you can. And then actually I've got the Loctite's in a little carbide uh, tray, so I'm actually gonna put the lid on and hopefully save it for the next build. I don't waste it. Yeah, four mil and broken limit switch causing anti-backlash and other holder to shred. Yeah, that's another thing. You don't wanna have this machine be so powerful that it, you know, an accidental move or crash like completely shreds your machine apart. Go. There we go. Okay. Rails! Fasten the MGN 15 rails to the Y axis, screwing M3 tens to every other hole in the rail. Centering hole. Cool. Um, uninstall the y-axis block. Then why did I just put... Oh, I, you have to put that in to indicate the rail. Yeah. No need to thread lock at this point. Well, too late. <laughs> okay, uh, rails. So this is probably the mid-size rails, I'm assuming. So we got that. We got that. M3, are these M312s or M310s? I can't remember. M310s, so these are the M310s, so now I need, um, or no. No, those are M310s, okay. So let's get our peanuts. So they go right up against the front and it's every other. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna put all of them in because I have an extra, extra T-nuts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and also because I, I don't want chips getting in them. Um, I, I, I don't want to get, um, like chips and whatnot in, in under the rails. Um, so the screw will stop that. Hopefully. Milo well before he came up with the project name. That happens. It's like Voron. We stopped using numbers. We actually call the printers names now. And even then, people are like, what? I have 2x speed here in the music at normal speeds feel weird. <laughs> oh, I bet. Which 
shoot me. Okay, well. Oh, that's why. There we go. I don't think Loctite works too good when you mix it with grease, but... Every other one goes right in except for you, whatever. What are we gonna rename? I don't know, the V2 is probably gonna stay the same. Did I print? Oh no, I got them. I just don't, I, I put all the, the screws in loose and then I'll, I'll put the jig on and then I'll go through and tighten them all. So usually I leave them loose that way I can shimmy them around to like line up T-nuts that don't line up properly. Start from the middle, work your way out. The reason you start from the middle and work your way out is if there's a bow or anything, you don't like over tension it essentially. And then it goes right up against the rail or the, uh, the front block. What time are we at anyways? Yeah, half hour. We're gonna go until I get the Y axis assembled. So the moment it says put the X axis on, that's what we're gonna call it today. So don't forget, if you do wanna win that spool of Polymaker filament, um, you have to enter before the end of stream. So you have at least half an hour. Get in your hole. Get in your hole. There you go. Two. Three. Hello. Four. Eight. 
A good trick whenever you do this, when you put the, the T-nuts in, put the rail just beside it and that way you can line them up. And then when you put them on, it kind of sucks here because you do have a rigid mount. So what you could do is like shift everything like half an inch, if that. That way you could like, you know, as you put the screws in, you can you can shimmy around and make sure everything lines up before you actually go through and do the, uh, the final lineup. Show the stuff off to your wife. Or dog or... No, she's she she likes this stuff. Wow, the colors on this uh, C920 are not good. Like, I know it's winter, and I'm pasty white, but I am not that pale. Actually, oh shit, maybe I am. Yeah, well, let's go back to the Sony. Good old Sonys. I'm married with a kid. Are you, are you not cut up on, caught up on the, the Nero 3D lore? magnets sometimes this now that goes against the front he's in these are a lot stiffer than the war on ones and I think I like that how do they work? That's a good question. When you find out, let me know. Start in the middle. Them all down, and then go through and torque them. How do magnets work? Like something with nuclear forces or something? I don't know. That print's done. I have to check that. I gotta print more of these trays. Got the, uh, that's what the, uh, the Prusa Mark IV is doing right now. It's printing a bunch of trays in, uh, PETG. Quantumly, there you go. It uses science and physics. Something with clowns, too, if I remember correctly. Now, you do want to be careful because these are M3 screws, so you can over torque these and snap the heads off kind of easily. Uh, will this mill peck? Why, why mill peak when I can print peak, right? Why mill peak when we can print peak? But um, maybe, no, probably. I actually want to use this for Delrin, to be honest. Stuff like Delrin, um, light aluminum, but like I, I think something like Delrin would be really good on this. Okay, so now I take the front off. So I take the front back off. So good thing I torqued it. <laughs> so undo that.
Uh, could you technically use the mill to create chips of printed parts? I mean, technically, but considering I can't even recycle 3D printed parts here, there's no point. Yeah, Palm is really good. Like, if you were building... Okay, put in perspective. Or perspective. For, for knowledge purposes. Remember Voron uh, V24? So not, not Phoenix. Voron V24. When that machine originally came out in, like, 2017, Max machine parts for it on a Shapoko, I believe. One of the early Shapokos. And um, he used uh, Palm. Delrin. And it worked really good. It held up the whole life of the machine. So it's a step up from printed parts, but you don't have the issues that you have printing or machining metal, essentially. So Delrin is actually a really nice plastic if you're planning to make like a 3D printer out of it. I dropped my bearings. Ugh. Where'd those go? Shit, I'm gonna have to find those. Oh, crap, I got one. I don't know where the other one went. I'll find it. Oh, I lost all of them, shoot. One second. Side quest. Two? Okay, there's two. Oh, and here's the third. Okay. You know what I'm gonna do? You'll see. Okay. So that goes on. Okay. So the printed part goes towards the back. I got a feeling I'm going to have to loosen all these nuts. You can't get at some of them. Ah, shoot. Come on, come on, get on, get on, get on. Get on. Shoot. Let's, let me see what's going on. May have to t um, or I may have to loosen the uh, carriages. Yeah, it doesn't want to go on. Okay, so if I loosen some of these carriage nuts, and maybe it'll shimmy itself home. Maybe, hopefully. Loosen the rails, reinstall, but no, you don't want to do that. Yeah, a quarter turn should do it. Are you talking the, cause the two, okay, here's the thing. Normally on a CNC, you would install one rail that has like a machine surface. And then when you install the second one, you index that one with like a, a, a an indicator essentially. Um, so, in this case, since we're based off the extrusions, you'd want to loosen the carriage. So, let me loosen the carriage. Um, yeah, a quarter tune should do it on the carriage. Yeah, so we're going to loosen the carriage. Discord call? Yeah, if you want, give me a call. Uh, whoever messaged me about the G2E, the answer is no. Uh, where is the, where is the call button? There we go. Join call. 
What's up? Right, you got me? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Awesome. So, what... um, uh, so basically, um, a fourth turn on each one of the characters uh, will help you slide it back on. Once that's done, um, you can, uh, if, it, if it's still binding slightly, which it can do, uh, what you can do is keep one of the rails as your, um, your kind of datum rail, uh, loosen every single bolt on the other rail except uh, one at the end, and that way you'll line them up in the right, uh, relatively uh, good enough for a hobby level mill. Okay. Yeah, the only downside is you can't access all the screws um, for the Y rail or for the Y carriages. Yeah, you can only access. Yeah. So let's see what we get. Let's see and what we... I believe, if I can remember this correctly, because it's been a while since I worked on G1.5, uh, you should be able to access at least three of them. Yeah. And that should leave the last one to pivot. Hopefully. I really don't want to slide out. Come on. Oh, there we go. Okay, we got that on. Okay, so now I gotta loosen these ones. Pivot. Pivot. Let's see if this works. There we go. A little bit more than a quarter. Yay, aligning stuff. Yeah, this is the least fun part of the build, I think. Yeah, and for those following along at home, this is like CNC. You, alignment on CNC is like the most pain in the butt part because it has to be aligned. Like you have to have everything like good. And if, if you don't, like it just, you know, it's not like a 3D printer where you can compensate. Well, you can compensate for skew in certain ways, but wow, this is ow, ow, run! I didn't lose any balls, but we're good. Oh yeah, that is. Oof. Yeah, we're gonna have to uh, play around with those one of the rails at least. So let me let me get the carriages back tight. At least it's consistent. It's 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 tight the whole way, but it's evenly tight the whole way. Yeah, so they're gonna feel tighter than the ones you would normally use on 3D printers because they're a Z1 preload. Okay. And the ones you would normally get from uh, LDO kits are a Z0, um, which means a, which is a very light preload. Okay. So these should, so as long as they move smooth, there should still be resistance, but they should move smooth, right? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, remember also that you're using a, an eight millimeter pitch lead screw and not belts to move it. Uh, yeah. So you're going to get a lot more mechanical advantage from that, um, which means it may feel very stiff, but when it's actually going through the screw, it'll be fine. Okay. So I'll get I'll get the I'll get the uh, screw on and then we'll we'll go from there I think once I get these tight so I'll, let me tighten these back up see what we're working with and then we'll go from there okay thanks no worries bud get the music going again. Okay, tighten all these back up. Only took a little bit of a chunk out of my finger. Only a little bit of a chunk out of my finger. Or oh, thumb. Yeah, CNC, alignment on CNC. It's not like a 3D printer where you're like, ah, this is good. You just, you know, make sure your rail, your, your extrusions are good together. Make sure your uh, your rails are centered and you just, you go. No, CNC is, is a lot more involved and expecting it to just go together and not have to fiddle with it and adjust stuff and tweak stuff it's no that's not a thing okay so i can hear the ball bearings racing through the tracks um but it 
Like I can hear them go. Don't know if they should be doing that. Or if it's just like they're fresh and the plastic's still like new. Like it moves smooth. It moves smooth and consistently through the whole thing. I, I, I guess we'll just leave it like that for now. Oh shoot, that heated up. The reason I heated this up is so I can do this. Ready, ready, ready. Yeah, I just staked the bearings, essentially. So now, it won't fall out. Quick rasp, just to make sure it's still flat. There we go. Voila. Okay. Yeah, when I slid this on, I had my thumb like under it and it like pinched it right in the corner of the printed part so I took a chunk out of my thumb oh well there we go I think this will be okay like remember this is a CNC you don't want backlash is bad in CNC so in 3d printing you don't really have to worry about it with belts but like you don't want this like when you when you do this you don't want this going whoo you you want to have to push everything to move it in a CNC I think we're okay I think we're okay. Okay, so that's that. So we put the block back on. So good thing I took it off, so now I can put it back on. There we go. Um, from the looks, so they seem fine. It sounds more just because you're putting constant acceleration. Yeah, plus I'm pushing on it like this, like coming down on a 45 pushing. I'm not like, like pushing along the motion of access too, I think. Together. Just in case. At least these ones from the front, if they ever loosen up, not an issue. That's off, right? Yeah. Yo, yeah, it moves fine. It's just, you can tell it's stiff, but. I'll be honest, I never actually built a CNC before that uses rails. The only ones I played with is like the Congro Robo CNC and 3018s, which use rods and bearings. So that's like a different, that's different. So I think this is okay. And I'll be honest, I never really manually moved a bridge port without cranking the knob. So I don't know how smooth the bridge port is. Um, although considering how clapped out the ones were at my shop, they probably did kind of, probably would move pretty easily. Hey, Brazil! Come to Brazil! There you go. I will say my LTT store screwdriver is getting pretty slick from the, uh, the grease. There we go. Yeah. I, 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 I am so tempted to just douse my hands in ISO to get the grease off. I need to get, you know what, screw it. I'm like, wait a minute, I have a kid. Yeah, come on, come on. Where are you, there, yeah, come on. There we go. Heck yeah, baby wipes. Good old baby wipes. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna wipe it on my kid. I'm like, I've, I'm, I have a kid, so I have baby wipes everywhere. Okay, okay, so we have that block on. Now we gotta put the 550 lead screw on the NEMA 23 motor with an eight to 6.5. Now, all the NEMA 23s are the same in this kit. 
They're all the same. Um, so we're gonna go with this one. Okay, and then I'm gonna need the mid-size, or, okay, these two are the same length. 550. Fifty. Yep. And then we need one of those connectors. So we attach this thing. So let me put that there. So these are the Oldham couplers. So let's just. Oh, what? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we got. No flat. Okay, so it just tightens. Okay, so that goes on. And then you just tighten it, I guess. Nope, not that the right size. That's not the right size. Where's the right size one? So we put that on using that connector. Yeah, it, well, it, it's, I want to call it a baby bridge port because a bridge port's like a cast iron. It, it's a vertical mill. Like the type of machine, it, it's a vertical milling machine. Um, that's like the on paper description of this type of motion system. It's a vertical milling machine. Um, something like an MPCNC, I think they're called portal. CNC's or portal milling machines where you, you, you can move the, the tool head moves around in the X and Y. And then you have horizontal milling machines. Um, yeah. You can scale in the X and Y, or yeah, you can scale in X and Z. You can't scale in the Y on this because the Y is dictated by your overhang. By however much the, the spindle overhangs from the, the vertical, that dictate, that's half your Y essentially. So if you were to want to scale your Y, you would have to hang your your spindle out further, which would not be good because you lose a ton of rigidity doing that. Portal style is basically a bed slinger. No, yes, kinda, it depends. It, it depends how it's, portal style would be bed slinger. Yeah, I guess, yeah, there's a few different styles. There's. Machine go burr, machine go burr. I thought portal was more like the, the tool head move, like a tri-mill. Like here, let me, we're gonna go on a little adventure. Let me pull up my YouTube channel. Uh, YouTube studio, content, uh, uh, videos, filter by, unlisted visibility. I'll show you the, the machine that we had, the, one of the last machines we got at the shop before I quit. Um, uh, it's a trimill or a trimmel. It's from the Czech. Actually, it's from the Czech Republic. So if anyone here is from, uh, I think the Prusa folks might know what this machine is, uh, but it's called a trimmel. If I can find it. So this is a 43 millimeter sumo drill, drilling at 12 inches a minute. This was one of the, the machines we had in our shop. So the bed doesn't move, that moves in the X and Y, and then it can also rotate and um, you can see how it can move. So it can also spin, so it's a five axis. This is a five axis machine. But that's a 43 millimeter sumo drill, drilling at 12 inches a minute through, um, what is that, like two or three inches of, of steel. So you can see the chips that are coming off are so hot, there's smoke in the cooling. But this is a five axis. So that machine, it's got two giant cast iron, basically walls on each side. And on top of them are ways that the uh, whole gantry moves on. And then the tool head moves on the X. And then it goes up and down. It's, it's, it, the machine literally can go a foot more, has an extra foot of Z, 
but we we had to put a limit on it because it would get up so high it would hit the crane. So they had to put a, uh, a limit switch on it to prevent it from going that high. So. Okay, back to work, back to work. Side quest over. Okay, so we have that and then it screws in from the back. Okay. So before we do that, I gotta make sure these are cleared out. Out. The last thing you want is plastic. a little bit of plastic that's blunt. There we go. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. So this screws in from the back. So remember to apply medium strength thread lock light on. Oh yeah, the, the, the couplers. Uh, I could do that after. Right, because it's, yeah, okay. So that goes in there from the back of the Y into the, that from the back. Okay, be sure to get it through the Y anti-backlash. If you do not, there's a bearing nut. Okay, so let's put that in. So let me get a little bit of the, a little bit of some greasy grease. And as for what grease I'm using, uh, white lithium. Why? Because I got a whole bottle of this stuff. So this goes yeah, all the way through into there. There we go. Get me a hole. Now the fun part. So what do you guys, what, what do you got? What's everyone up to for dinner? What's everyone up to for dinner? Anything exciting? Anything exciting? This is going to take a while. So, so what's everyone up to? What's everyone up to? I don't like the fact that this is on an angle. I don't like the fact this is on an angle. I don't like the fact that this is on an angle. Why is this on an angle? I, I, and I can't get at it. Shit, this is on an angle. This is on a hardcore angle. Like, this is, this is on an angle. I gotta, okay. This is on an angle. How can I fix this? So I have to take this off. Can I get at it? I got the two screws there, one there. Yeah, I can get at it. I can get at it. I think. No, I can't. No, I. I can't get at it. I can't get at it. I can't. It's on an angle. Shit. So I gotta take this off now. And. Damn it. Okay, one second. I wish you could, ah, oh, shit, this is annoying. This is gonna be annoying. Cause I gotta pretty much take the whole thing apart now. Cause I need to loosen the Y axis nut to center it and then tighten it. And I can't get at it because the screws to get at this are underneath. Damn it. Okay. Um. That's why we have a note in the manual to double check it all before going further than that point. Okay. <laughs> well, I are to dumb. Shit. It looks centered. Yeah, I could see it now. Shit. Oh well. It is what it is. Let me fix it. It looks centered. <laughs> Drill a hole. Actually, you know what? You probably could. You probably could put two holes through this printed part somehow.
It's okay. Easy fix. Easy fix. We can fix this. We can fix this. We can fix this. Easy fix. Easy. Well, not easy fix, but... So, if you're watching at home, um, basically... Um, you could probably skip ahead five minutes if you're watching this in the future, because I'm just going to take this off, play around with some screws and put it back together. And I got to start reading these notes more instead of just looking at the picture. <laughs> just unscrew the carriages on top. You can't, you have to take this off and to take this off and I can't unscrew all the carriages. And you can remove the thing without taking off. The, I can't. I'd have to take off all these four carriages too. So I'd have to take off these four carriages, then undo these four carriages to take it off. Or I could just take four screws out, slide this part off, slide it off, and take three screws and two screws. So. There we go. So. It's funny because one of these screws is accessible. Of the three screws that I had to take out, one of them is accessible, but two aren't. Which kind of sucks, but whatever. Uh, somebody gifted 10 memberships. Did I thank them? Who was that? Who was that? Uh, MacBoy Pro! Cheers and appreciated. Gifted 10 community memberships. Cheers. That's stripped. Oh no, I just had something in there. Bearings. Oh no, I, I staked the bearings. The bearings shouldn't fall out. Unless you're talking about this. I'll, I'll put the, the guides back in before I uh, slide this back on. Any retainers in the bearing blocks? Oh, I'll put them back on. Okay, so now, put this now. I take that comes off. So loosen this. Loosen that. Get one of these. Yeah, on larger rails, like if, if you notice, I'm not being as as like safe with my um, with the carriages as much as I would on a normal build. They're so big, like that you don't have the same issue you do on like MGN Seven. Put it that way, like you don't you don't run into that issue as much. Okay, so now I have to like I guess eyeball it straight. Like, okay, that that looks centered. I mean, it looks centered before, but. Like, it, this is, I guess, I guess that looks straight. Right, yeah, and then you tighten it and it goes crooked. Um, a, a printed jig would be really nice right now. Actually, what I could do is I could put that there, rest that there, because that's flat. Screw that in, okay? Put it in the middle. And then, grab my scale. That is, what, that's 75, 6, 7, 7. Uh, 
Stop moving. Stop moving. Get right there. Sorry, five, six, or seven. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. I think that's okay. I think we're okay. So now, hold that in place. There we go. I'll take the last little bit. There we go. Remember when I said the fun part about CNC is making sure everything is aligned? Now you know. Now you know what I was referring to. Making sure everything aligned with CNC is fun. Now I gotta do the same thing on the other side. Unscrew this all the way. And knowing is half the battle. So now we put this. there, flip that over, these guys go back, oh, the Loctite, oh. a little more fresh Loctite, now I gotta do the same thing <laughs> on this side. Put a free rail in the carriage to align, that is a good idea. That is a good idea. That is a good idea. Use a, a rail as an alignment tool. The problem is, okay, no, actually that's not a good idea. How do you know your carriages are aligned? How do you know your carriages are aligned? Like, like that's, that's the problem you run into. Normally on a CNC machine, what you would do is your rail, you would have one rail that would literally sit on a machined surface. Like you would machine the slot for the rail that has no like no slop in it. So when you put that rail in, it cannot move. And then you put an indicator on a carriage on that rail and you indicate the next rail. And then you put your carriages on that and then you build it up from that. The fact that we're building this as a unit and then putting it on and hoping that it's it's perfectly like this and not like this is, is not the best way to do it, but we're kind of limited because of the we're limited by the technology of our time kind of thing. Just chunk. Okay, well, okay, you did line up before. I gotta go the other way. Parts are over constrained. Well, that's the thing. There's a, there's a, the fun thing with CNC, there's a fine line between over constrained and perfect. And you have to find it. So this goes like, like this, I believe. So Y is towards the front. So that goes like that. So it's this side I gotta loosen. So maybe I had that too tight. Oh, come on. You worked before. That's it, you're coming out. all linear rails yeah it, it, it's a cnc it's always going to be a little fiddly there we go okay you worked before oh maybe oh you know why because the rails i'm using a different um a different lead screw shit Lot of small adjustment yeah it, it, it's nature of the beast with cnc it's it is nature of the beast with cnc
Okay, now the question is, how straight is that? Let me try this again. We're going full circle and cutting molds with this? Yeah, probably not. Okay, now we tilt that back up. Uh, cut my scale, see where we're at. So what we got, what do we got, we got 58. 60. Okay, that ain't right. Now I gotta loosen this. I think that's as good as we're gonna get. I think we're okay. I think we are okay. Take this back up. Double check again. Now comes the part of the stream where I go, I am absolutely starved. Nope, shit. Moved again. Okay, let me okay, let me sit down so I don't move my head. Okay. So you are exactly you are 59 millimeters on this side. And on this side. 59. Okay, we're good. We're good. I'm going to stop looking at it. I'm going to call it good, and we're going to move on with our lives. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Is it CNC fun, guys? It, you know, this is why belts are great. This is why belts are great. You just run the belts. Just run the belts. Belts are great. You just throw the belt in, and off you go with your life. None of this, none of this alignment jigs. Put these guys back on. Of course, everything is covered in grease right now. Okay, so printed part goes towards the back. Line this back up. on Now do it with ball screws instead of lead screws. You wouldn't be doing it this way with ball screws. With ball screws, the carriage um, would be attached to the ball screw. It would come as an assembled unit usually. So you would have your your two ends and the actual carriage that moves on the ball screw would come all together usually. So you wouldn't be dealing with like this. This, this printed part here wouldn't be here. It would be a, an actual thing and you would just screw this to the carriage usually. Tell Grant belting is easy. It is. But like I'm coming from the, you know, aspect that I've belted up Corex wise probably three, four dozen times by now. Okay. 
Yeah, and also for those wondering about ball screws, you can't really fit ball screws in these C-beams. You'd have to go to a bigger extrusion size. I'm sure somebody with a lot of time on their hands could probably figure it out. Um, but I am not a person with a lot of time on their hands right now, so. Okay, so now let's put this back in and see what we're working with. Oh no, my steak fell out. Get back in there. Okay, so now we hope that this is better. It is, I think we're okay. It's good enough. I think we're still out, but we're out like not much. Okay, so insert, be sure to thread it through the Y-axis anti-backlash nut, but not through the bearing block yet. So not through the front, okay. okay so what's the instructions say here? Okay, before pushing the lead screw through the Y-axis, add a locking collar on the inside of the bearing. Leave this loose. Where is the locking collar? What is a lock, what is a locking collar look like? Oh, it looks like that. Okay. The lead screw is bendy. Yeah, but the problem is you don't want it to be too bendy because then it'll bind up. And with the amount of force involved on this machine, you really don't want it binding up on you. Okay, so we put this little lock collar here on the end. And then, okay, so we do that and then we slide it all the way in. Okay. Let me screw this on a bit more. There we go. Go through the bearings. Why don't you want to go through the bearings? It doesn't want to go through the bearings. Why don't you want to go through the bearings? Go through the bearings. through the bearings. Come on. There we go. Come on. There we go. Okay, one set of bearings. A little while should look up. Okay, that was something I was going to ask. It shows the it doesn't you don't see the motor wire here. So it could be to the right or to the bottom. There we go. Okay, we got that in. Got that in, okay, so that's in. So the motor wires go up, right? Who said they go up? Who was that that said they go up? The motor wires go up, the connector go up. It should not go up. Okay, so which way? Either side is fine, just not down. Okay, so we'll go that way, go to the right. Because when this mounts, I want the wires going away from everything. Not up. Okay. Is that called out in the manual? That, you might want to add that in the manual. I don't see it. Ooh, wifey's home. That means pizza time. Okay, let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. Okay, so this attaches with M530s from the back. Wow, M5100s. Woo! M530s, there we go. M5100s, wow, those are some chonky boys. These, oh, these are cap heads. Clean this so I can actually grip it. <laughs> I will say the, the LTT screwdriver, I ordered, I was first batched to get one and I have been using it a decent amount and it's holding up pretty good. So, like, it's got some wear. It's got some wear. But it's... It's doing pretty good. Okay. Loctite's drying up. Okay. So, we mount these. Get these started.
There we go, okay. Like that. Always tighten in a cross pattern. There you go, okay. And then lastly, add the locking collar. So we've got a locking collar on each side, so this keeps your bearings in place. Here. So we got the one on this side, one on this side. Now these actually have, um, they're pre loctited which is nice. So that is, that is kind of cool. How's the build going? Uh, going okay. We've run into a few little snags just with wording and, you know, alignment. But that's kind of the norm with 3D printing with, or uh, with, oh, take a drink, um, with CNC is getting everything aligned. But otherwise, it's going pretty good. We've got the X axis done. There's a lot more little notes I got to pay attention to than I'm used to, but we're okay. Okay, so that's that, that's that. So we got both locking nuts on. Locking collar, oh, there's preload on these? Oh, shit. Okay. Um, Using your fingers, touch each collar towards each other, driving them to the face of the screw, tightening the operator side before. Oh, okay, so I did that, okay. Yeah, because you don't want them moving back and forth. Okay. To avoid Y-axis ends up getting damaged or incentives, it's a good idea to install it later, so don't put that in. for dinner? Uh, pizza and crazy bread. Pizza and crazy bread? Oh, you're being spoiled. Okay. You wanna eat it, me? Yeah, that will be done in, inside in a minute. Okay. Back to work. Almost done. Okay, I think that's about it. Drag chain. Okay, well, we'll okay. So, yeah, this, this stuff we'll do tomorrow. Or next, yeah. Ah, shoot, it's the last thing. Okay, you know what? Screw it. It's I was like, oh, we'll, we'll we'll call it, but I'm like, it's it's literally like, you know what? I'm not gonna put this on because if I put it on, I'll break it. So we're gonna leave that off. So we'll carry on here. Let me bookmark this. So we'll call it here. Okay. So let me just make sure this actually. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Where's? How do these work? Do you put a heat set in here? Is that how these work? Or do you, are they self-tappers? I'm assuming you'd put a heat set in here. Luckily, the end doesn't really matter, so I'm just gonna tap on here nice and we'll do this, we'll do this. Okay. Put the towel around it, clamp it. Ready? Ah! I hit the button and it let go in my hand. <laughs> oh, the drill. Yeah, the drill. Oh, that's butter. Okay, make sure you don't go off the end.
Oh, that's butter. That is butter. Oh. Oh, I stopped spinning. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. That's good. That is good. I think we're good. I think we're good. The, the backlash um we we pre-tuned it for backlash i don't feel a damn thing i'll be honest i don't feel a damn damn bit of backlash on this like like yeah there's there's nothing here oh i i did they, they are greased you can see there there is grease i could probably put more grease on it actually it's not gonna Yeah, it feels it feels really good. Like, like I'm holding it to try and feel like you know how when you're holding something, you could tell if it's like binding or if it's wobbling or whatever. It's consistent the whole way through. That is that is actually really good. That actually came out really good. I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. But it, it's smoother than the the, the calm grow. Put it that way. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have the y-axis and the xy carriage is assembled now. Yay! I'm hungry. I'm gonna go make pizza. Goodbye. No, I'm not gonna end it that way. Okay, that was that one actually went really good. So we did a little bit of hiccups. I know now to pay a lot more attention to the manual because there's a there's way more little callouts in the manual than uh, than I'm used to. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, so, yeah, so we will continue this build on Tuesday. So next Tuesday at, oh, shit, next week is, my wife's on afternoon. Okay, so it'll be 11, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. would be the, the next two weeks of streams for weekday streams. Because um, tomorrow we have something more important than this to build. Otherwise, I would be building this tomorrow. But I, I know the, the current ongoing Saturday night build is so important. We have to get that done. Uh, Eastern time zone. Eastern time zone. So for the Euros, for the for the, the Brits, it'll be, what, 4 p.m., I think? The fire starter? Yeah, the fire starter. Although, I will be honest, it's like 14 Celsius out right now. So it's not actually that, but it's actually really nice out right now. I'd open my door, but something's blocking it. So yeah, so there we go. That is the Y axis of uh, now the Milo put together. So now, luckily, these carriages I have full access to from underneath, I believe. So when it comes to aligning the Y axis, it'll be a lot easier, I think. So. Yeah, that actually, I'm actually really happy with that. That actually seemed to go together pretty good and I have access to those if I need to. Yeah, yeah, so we'll be we'll be good. That looks actually really good. Cool, I'm happy, I'm happy, cool. Okay, you guys wanna do a giveaway? Let's do a giveaway. Let's do the giveaway so I can go eat because I am starving. I'm gonna go destroy some pizza, so one second here. Okay. 
Dictionary of Wheel of Names. So every stream we give away a spool of filament from Polymaker. Um, so if you didn't enter today, you'll have another chance tomorrow. And well, every stream, because I do it every stream, so I copy all these names. Apparently a C and C goes chippy chip chip. Apparently a C and C goes out of budget. <laughs> Apparently a C goes not as fast as a Voron. You'd be surprised. I have seen tool heads that weigh more than my car move faster than my car can move. You'd be, you'd be surprised how fast some of these things can boogie. Okay, um, somebody give me a number between uh, one and five. It's a Milo, one deep 1.5. Give me a number between one and five. I need a number between one and five. Three. One, two, three. Round and round she goes where she stops. I, I don't know. I'll know before you though, because there's like an eight second delay on the stream. And our winner is, ba -ba -ba, Gerald. Gerald, Gerald, Gerald Cochran. Congratulations. Uh, you have won yourself a spool of filament from Polymaker. And you will get an email from me after the stream ends with information on how to collect your filament. So there we go. That is um, part one of however many it takes to build this. Um, we will continue this build on next Tuesday at 11 a.m. EST on this channel. So if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe, smash the like button as well. Um, shout out to Polymaker for the spool of filament we give away this stream and every stream, links for them and more in the video description. But a huge shout out to, hey, there we go. LDL Motors, 1999, cheers and appreciate it. Happy Chinese New Year. Hope you're enjoying it. Hope the whole LDO team is enjoying the holidays. Uh, but shout out to LDO Motors for providing this kit uh, that we are using for this build series. So I don't have a link to a specific vendor for it because uh, LDO doesn't actually sell directly. Uh, but if you do want to get a kit of the Milo V1.5 for yourself, uh, check out the link in the description. It has a link to all your local LDO Motors resellers and go through them and get yourself one of these. Or you, you just self-source it if you really want to, but why? This comes with everything you want, pretty much. This has all the goodies. So get, get the kit, get the kit, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's a lot easier. Nobody self source anymore. I, I'll admit, I kind of miss the days when you'd go on AliExpress and order all the parts for your Voron, and then over the next three to six months, everything showed up. And then you sat there for a month going, I have everything to build my printer except for bearings. So you break down and buy them on Amazon for four times the price, and then they show up the same day as the AliExpress bearings did, but whatever. Um, but no, it's, it's buy the kit. It's a lot easier to buy the kit. So we're gonna call it there. I'm gonna go eat pizza. I am absolutely starving. Um, this was fun. We'll carry on Tuesday. Tomorrow we'll do the, the, the ANET. And uh, for those that donate to the channel, gifted memberships to others, or became members of the channel yourself, I thank you. I would not be able to do the things I do, create the content I create without your continued support. You make it all possible. Uh, so it is Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. And I will see you tomorrow. Yay.